This entrepreneur has made $50 million by never eating breakfast and working out only twice a week. Yet he has the movie star body of Bruce Wayne. Thank you to the family at Bulldog. You're making this happen for us. Listen to his story now. They know that I go flip mode when I bust the rhymes. Man's on a different thing, man. I told him a hundred times. I did a bunch of crimes, and none of them were done for the vine. So you can take that bullshit and stick that where the sun don't shine. The summer's up, it's about to get real cold. Late nights in the studio with the bros. Welcome back to the MBH Podcast. Money buys happiness. Guys, before we get into it, you already know what to do. Like, subscribe, do the duties, fucking comment, fucking dislike it, whatever you want, to be honest. We hate comments, love comments. <laughs> hate comments. We, we love, love the them hate all. comments. We love them all, guys. But uh, special episode today. All right. The boys are in Miami. Um, and sorry, I have to say, if you see the, the, the double stash. The double stash is crazy right now. There's a reason behind it. If you watch the vlog, you'll, you'll find out. So, you know what I mean? Just just keep that in mind. <laughs> and so where are we at? Who, who are we with? What's we going on? We in South Beach right now. Right? Yep. South Beach? Yep. Greg O'Gallagher. Yes. Keno Body. Yep. The Bruce Wayne mm. of Toronto, Canada. Yes. But we're here in Miami. What's up, brother? What's going on, bro? My guy. Doing, bro? We've been trying to make this happen for a minute. We've been, yeah, we've been chatting about making this happen months ago yep. in Toronto. But you know what? I think the move is to do it in Miami. Bro, everything happens yeah. for a reason, bro. Energy here is amazing. And I think that's the first thing I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about Miami. And, and I know you've been coming out here a lot. Um, why you've been coming out to Miami and, and what do you like about it? Yeah, yeah. So I actually first came here for extended period of time, literally a year ago. Okay. Canada, Toronto went into a freaking another lockdown. Yeah. Okay. After two or three years, we went back into lockdown <laughs> when everyone knew this was complete garbage. And I was like, there's no freaking way I'm staying in Toronto. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not doing this. This is complete bullshit. Yeah. Um, and I booked a flight to Miami. I was in, I was Toronto. You were locked in your apartment. I come to Miami. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I get in, I go to a restaurant and it is a freaking vibe. Yep, like yep. Everyone's, everyone's sitting down, having dinner. Cool People are happy. Other, yeah. I'm like, where is this? <laughs> where's the shit? You yeah. know? Um, and i I kind of fell in love with Miami, the energy. I like the way they handled, uh, this, their, their little, they handled kind of stuff. Yep. Um, and, uh, dude, the weather's amazing here. Yep. Miami's actually supposed to have like the most fit population actually. Yes. People really value, care about their fitness. 100%. We always say that we, uh, that's something we noticed right off the bat. So that, yeah. that makes sense that you're here as yeah, well. hundred percent. And I also like, dude, I love being outside. Like I want to spend, you know, as much time outside in the summer in Toronto. I like work out outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I bring the weights out and it just, yeah. dude, it's so much better than being inside. So Miami, I can, dude, I feel way better here. You got your mannequin outside too, that you're just dummy yeah. at all times. But I think like, yeah, I mean, we always try to explain to people like, cause they're always asking us like what it's like in Miami. Like why you guys always go in there? What, what's what's the what's the shtick what's the big shtick and it's just mm. like it's energy man and, and you're here the sun's out so you know what's funny okay i used to spend a lot of time in la i had yeah. one foot in toronto one foot in la and like i went back to la a couple years ago and i i got into like los angeles i went to see some friends and it just didn't feel the same it's not the mm -hmm. same it you know it's not the same we were we were there like what three four months ago yeah, and yeah. We, we went a couple times the past year and we're like the energy, Wait, bro. Because that was the my energy first time was, too. was bullshit. And yeah. you hear LA, you hear about it all yeah. the time. Oh my god, city of dreams, and you can you can blow up there. And we went there, and it was like it was like a dystopia. Yeah, was like, I was like, wait, this is like this is like Toronto. I know. It's like yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I I literally do not get any bit excited to go into LA. Yeah. yeah. When I go to Miami, I get excited. Mm -hmm. People are freaking nice here. Yeah. It's just a great great feel. It's hard to be upset here, you know? Like in Toronto, like you yeah. wake up and you're like, if you're already going to have a bad day, yeah. plus it's just gray outside, no sun. Yeah. Plus not many people are try like really friendly. You're it's it's bad. But here you can have like you could be having a shitty day. You look outside, mm -hmm. the sun's out, the water's mm -hmm. there, the, the, wa beach, the ocean, the, ocean. The, the beach, oh. even like the you know, even when I was walking to dinner last night, you just smell like the ocean breeze. Mm -hmm. oh, you feel salt, it, bro. Yeah. Water just so Dude, yeah. it makes sense. It makes yeah. sense. anyone that's listening, it makes sense why we're all here right now, right? But we gotta talk about your brand, Kino yeah. Body, right? Where money buys happiness. So we're all about business and, and how you've built what you've done. And I think I've I've read a little bit about your story. I think it's super interesting, super inspiring. So maybe take us back to when you first got involved in fitness or or inspired by fitness. So I was sort of an anomaly. When I was like six years old, I was already drawn into this idea of fitness. Wow. I had an action figure 
a Batman action figure. And I was like mesmerized. I'm like, shit, I want to look like that. I want to have like the shoulders and the ripped abs. And uh, I asked my father, I was like, hey, can I ever, because when you're six years old, you don't understand how the body works. You don't understand yeah. like lifting and nutrition. Yeah. And I was like, can I ever look like that? He's like, yeah, I just got to work out and eat right. And I'm like, why doesn't any everyone do this? Like, I'll, I got to do some push-ups. I'm going to look more Jack. Yeah. Like, who is, who's not doing it? So to me, the initial thought with fitness was, it's very weird not to take advantage of it. It's yeah. very weird not to like work out, eat right, because it has such a massive payoff. Um, and so when I was six, I think I just started waking up a bit earlier with my dad doing push ups and sit ups. Wow. As six years, as six years old, say, holy insane, fuck, six yeah. years old, okay. And it was like the, the motivation was just the idea that we can become stronger, we yes. can become more powerful, we can look better. And I thought that was so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what well, I mean? What was yeah. your dad saying at that point? He's like, yes, let's do it. Let's, yeah, he's like, let's, he was probably pumped. He was pumped for me. Yeah. Like there's not many other species, you know, if you think about like dogs, they can't go and lift weights. Yeah. They're yeah. kind of born the way they are. Their environment dictates it a little bit, but humans, we have so much potential. Yes. You know, Definitely. our bodies are so wired for adaptation. So we can actually like make such a, profound difference yes well i've never even heard someone say that before no but it's a fact it's not like like you said not like fucking dogs are like hey let me just run a couple extra miles so i can okay. get a little more yeah fat. we're kind of the only ones that know that i think wow to, to kind of understand that at that age is crazy and and like even at that time right i think like okay a six seven year old now can be exposed to more things and see that and be like oh i want to be jack like and now you see yeah. on the internet there's seven year olds doing push-ups <laughs> doing chin-ups and shit but at that age that's that's very impressive, right? All, so I all guess you need is a fucking Batman fucking figurine. That's it. <laughs> get get you fired up. Get yourself a Batman figurine <laughs> out there. Um, so I guess from from that from that age, I mean, you're in school and stuff. Are you playing sports? I was I was hockey was a big part of my life when I was very very young. Uh, when I was a kid, you know, I'd play four days a week, and I I liked hockey. Okay. Um, and then at twelve or thirteen, as I started to lift weights and train, I just kind of fell in love with working out. And I'd read everything I could. I'd try different workout routines. I'd record every workout. I'd see what worked, see what didn't. I'd pursue different goals. I, for some time, I focused quite a bit on running. Um, nice. But I became more drawn to fitness. And I played around with different martial arts. But I keep, my, my love, my passion, my drive was really in training and lifting and all that transforming the body yeah so, transforming the body yeah was like was there a thought for you at any point like as you're in your teens like you know i'm gonna i'm gonna be a professional hockey player i'm gonna do this like what like career wise like as a kid what did you think you'd be doing so at like 15 16 it kind of dawned on me i was like i could you know i could and here's what i believe i believe life is very very short yeah, yeah. and deep down if you're being completely honest with yourself you want to you want to do you know you want to do what you're meant to do yeah. And I could see like as 15, 16, you kind of see the path unfold for yourself, your peers, you know, what your society expects of you, parents, so on and so forth. And I was like, man, how cool would it be to like for my life to be about fitness, for me to help yeah. people transform? And so the seed was planted. Um, now, the obvious path for fitness then was to be a personal trainer. Yeah, and yeah. at the time, I was like, that would be really, really cool. Train clients. That would be really, really awesome. Um, and... At 16, I actually started to like, I did my, I, I did my, one of my, the personal training certifications, but I wasn't actually old enough for it to really count. But okay. I did like the exam and stuff like okay. that. And then um, I started working at a gym and then I started training clients when I was 18. Um, and then that was when like, I was like, after a year of training clients, I was like, you know what? This is cool. Like I definitely scratched that itch but I want something way bigger. Mm -hmm. I want to go further. I want to have a bigger impact. Like training client after client um, just felt like, you know, some people love that and, and great for them, but I just, it just felt a little bit too trivial. Okay. I, wanted to, I wanted to wake up every day and feel like I was building my dreams, getting closer to my goals, as opposed to wake up every day to, you know, train some clients. So yeah. were you getting like, I guess from the the one-on-one -on -one training or whatever you were doing, you're getting some, some fulfillment from it. You're like, damn, like these people are changing their habits. They're transforming, but... Maybe you were like, I want to help more. I need I, to impact more people than this. Yeah, that was sort of how I, I mean, in one day, how many people can you possibly train? Yeah, and it gets exhausting. Like if you're, if you're training like six people in a day, it's actually pretty, it's pretty yeah. exhausting. So you're not just like standing there counting reps. Like you got to you yeah. gotta talk with, to them. You got to, you know, yeah. you got to help them bring up some weights. You got to, it's not like, real work. <laughs> this is easy. Yeah. No, but you're like, a, you're you're like, like a throw therapist. me on a podcast. Yeah. I, I feel like, I feel like personal trainers are... <laughs> 
It's true though. It's true. <laughs> I feel like personal trainers are kind of similar to like barbers in the sense of like, you're like a fucking therapist yeah. half the time. Yeah. You know, people are just like spitting their problems at you. And you're like, okay, let's go. Come on. Yeah. Do your do fucking push ups. You know, I remember when I, was, when I was like 18, 19, I was training clients. Like, I remember being so oblivious if a girl was actually into me. Really? I had this one female client and she kept telling me about, oh, I had this date. She's always telling me about these dates. She's making little comments. And I was like, oh yeah, that's great. Like, you know, yeah, he sounds, seems really cool. And it, everything was just going way yeah. over my head. You were just yeah. dialed. You were just, dialed. I was bro. completely dialed, bro. I was like way over, you know? Just way too dialed. Um, yeah. So I guess, I mean, even with the content, like where did, when did the content start with you? Like when did you start, I guess, creating on YouTube and, and IG? So, and why as well? Yeah, my first mentor, uh, Rusty Moore. Okay. He, uh, he was, he had a website called Fitness Black Book at the time. Um, and he did blog articles. And so I learned from him and I started doing content in 2011. I'd, I'd write articles that would rank on Google. Wow. And then I started to like write articles when like an actor got in shape, like Daniel Craig, uh, Casino Royale yeah. or Skyfall. I'd write how to, uh, the time Skyfall came out, I think it was in 2011 or something like that. And I wrote like how to build a body like Daniel Craig and, and Skyfall, the portion and stuff like that. And my website really started taking off. And then I didn't even care about doing YouTube or stuff like that. And so YouTube, I just did videos to support like the the article. So if I was okay. doing an article on, you know, how to get six pack abs, this and that, I'd film a video, put it in the article. And my website was getting some action. Like it was actually getting, uh, you know, pretty solid action. I think it was like 80, 80,000 plus visits a month, which yeah. at the time as a Insane. young kid, it was, yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh shit, this is working. Everything was working. But then like, I started to like, I was like, man, I'm spending all day writing these damn articles. <laughs> I spent two, five minutes filming a, a YouTube video and it's getting the same amount. Yeah, yeah. So I just kind of was like, you know what? Like I got to put more energy into the YouTube stuff. Yes. Um, Cause it was like such little work for massive upside. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, and then I started to kind of move uh, more in line with like doing YouTube. Okay. Um, and Instagram, I had an Instagram, my sister told me about Instagram when I was 21. Uh, so literally 10 years ago. So yeah. whatever that was, 2013. And I had Instagram just kind of like, she's like, oh, you should really use it to like kind of market yourself. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to do that. And then I, I met a uh, female fitness influencer, Betty Rocker or whatever, that she was really big on Instagram. She's like, she's like, Gregory, like you're, you have this fitness brand. This is not for your personal. This is for your brand. You gotta start posting. I was like, and this is crazy because I post so much shirtless content, but at the time I was like nervous. Like, I don't want to post a shirtless photo. My friends follow me. Like I don't want to <laughs> do that. That was that point in social media where people yeah. didn't know what it they was. They didn't know what yet. it was. Yeah. Yeah. What can I post? What are people going to say? So yeah. you were at that time. Yeah. Yeah. And then I just, I kind of just went all in on posting on Instagram every day, doing yeah. YouTube and and you know, I'm a very goal oriented person. I like with social media, like you can like, you know, hit certain goals, certain amount of views, yes. the followers, you can see it. You can yes. see the result like very, very clearly. So, you know, the social media stuff, like I kind of got pretty focused on it and the amount of the impact it had on my brand, my business, Huge. the ability yeah, to connect with my followers or customers so easily, see their messages, see what they like, you know, yeah. see their results. And then my Instagram just became like a machine of just getting, of everyone was just sending me their transformations. Yeah. People from years were doing my programs. They sent me their before and afters and I just got That's so amazing. many like results. And then, yeah. Was, was that your first product essentially? Like the, the, the programs that was like your first like thing that you the, sold online. The very first thing I sold online was, were, were like programs. I actually wrote like a, uh, a very simple program years and years ago before anything, no one probably maybe, you know, you were the first guy doing it, bro. I'll tell you straight yeah, up. Yeah, I remember yeah, you yeah. like, I remember That's it was crazy. your program. I think I even fucking tried to do it. I think it went on and you, you answered like a survey and then yeah. told you like the what quiz, the, the, the quiz, the yeah, quiz, yeah, yeah, okay, the okay. quiz. You, were, you, you were the first guy. I was, bro. it's first funny. Guy. It's funny. Cause everything I did in business happened completely organically. Cool. I, at first I wasn't really trying to like monetize or make money. I was just writing articles on my w website and I was just thinking long-term. And then I kept writing these articles and I'd share some workouts and people, people would comment on the article, dude, I've been doing this workout for four weeks. I've never got such good results. And then the next comment I'd start getting was like, you need to create your own program. I'm like, oh shit, people actually want to buy a program from me because mm. I built so much goodwill and I was giving so much value. This is kind of the first lesson I learned in business is that the more value you give, of course, the more people want to like give you value back. Yes. Um, and so- Givers gain. Givers gain, yeah. And yeah. so I, I was like, you know what? I spent some time. I put together uh, you know, a shredding guide on how to get lean. I, it was, tw it was super simple, 20 pages long. I didn't charge 1999. I charged 20 bucks, 20 pages. This is how you get shredded. And I launched it and dude, I was like, 
I was like 20 and like people were buying it like crazy. I was like, mm. holy shit. I was like, holy shit. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and then I was like, if so facts, if I just build up a, a bigger brand, bigger email list, more traffic, more eyeballs, then I can 10 X my income. I can whatever. And so of that course. was the first it's just a numbers, yeah. numbers it's game. It's a numbers game. But I yeah. think what you did well as, as well is, is you paid attention to your community. Yeah. Which a lot of people kind of just, it goes over their head. They're like, oh, well, they bought it. Fuck it. I don't care what they say now. But yeah. the fact that you are interacting with your community, oh, this is, this is the transformation you did. Oh, this is the feedback that you have on my product or my program. I think that that made a huge difference. It made, too. You know, and I think a lot of people that want to get into fitness kind of do something in line of what, with what I'm doing. Don't realize the amount of work that I put in forming, formulating my fitness approach, failing years, like hours yes. of research a day. And then also when I started kind of doing my brand, I would spend four or five hours a day just emailing people that emailed me. That's just the work they don't from see. That's they, they don't see, see that four or five hours a day. I didn't even I didn't even realize that I spent that much time. But I remember my one of my first girlfriends, um, Annie. She was like, she was like, she told me she's like, you used to spend like five six hours a day emailing your clients. Wow. <laughs> and like, even when we're hanging in, out, yeah. like, have her come over, hang out, and then I'd be emailing people all day. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I don't, I, I didn't remember I spent that much time. But literally, I was like so dialed in, and. Uh, and most people, like a lot of people in the fitness, what they're selling is they're just trying to get the sale. Their yeah. product quality is not very, very good. And for me, I just love people saying, dude, I bought your program. It freaking works. Mm, I yeah. love it. I'm, I'm, you know, I started seeing results. I like, I loved seeing the impact it was making. Yeah. Um, and the results that people were getting and that getting that feedback just made me so much more empowered and, and driven to build the content to, you know, well, to, you have longevity in your brand at that point because, like, if someone yeah. has a bad experience, they're probably not going to come back. Hundred, hundred. And you realize that at a young age, which I think, yeah. going back to it, a lot of, in any industry, I think a lot of people are just trying to get that first sale because they think that it's just a huge world where they can continue to sell to people one time. Right? Would you say? Yeah, I didn't. You, I didn't. Honestly, I didn't. I didn't understand people that were just selling kind of crap. Yeah. yeah. And then you know, for sure, they're getting terrible feedback. They're getting people pissed off. And I just, I don't get but how you do that. It's not long term, you can't it's do not, that long it's term short term. when you get that second product out, people remember. Yeah. Would right? you say, would you say that was like your first big business win? Like the, the program? Um, the program was definitely absolute clear proof. I have something here mm -hmm. and it was, you know, bringing me enough money to, to support, you know, um, more of a, you know, my lifestyle at the time, which wasn't very, very much at all. Um, but it was definitely like strong proof. Yeah. Um, and then when I did like more content, more YouTube stuff, when I did that quiz, I had multiple programs, I had sort of like a funnel. Um, that was when things went like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. Like what, like, what are we talking here? Like numbers wise? Like, so I mean at 20, at 20, 19, I started my business 20. I launched my first program 21, 22, 23. I kind of was building my like fat loss program, warrior shred, Greek God. And then at 24, 23, 24, I started like really getting my YouTube dialed. And then basically I said, like everything I've done has been organic. People kept asking me every day, Greg, you got all these different programs. I don't know what program to do. I don't know what program to do. And I'd answer these emails. That, like I said, I spent five, six hours answering emails. Okay, I'm answering the same question a thousand times. Yeah. <laughs> Let me figure something out here. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a quiz mm. where you answer these select questions and I'll tell you exactly which program to do. And I, and I would record like, I'd have like six different videos depending on the physique result you get. People watch the video like, holy shit, I feel like you, you know me so well. Describe <laughs> yeah. my problems. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like, you know, yeah, yeah, man, you're skinny fat, it's tough. Like people think you must have abs. You take your shirt off and it's like, shh, it's a painful place to be, <laughs> yeah. but we can solve it. Here's yeah. exactly, you know, and people would buy these programs like crazy. And so I, I was like 23, 24, and we're doing like 100, 120K a month. Wow. Without a dollar spent on ads, and my That's costs were nothing. And you're just pumping content. Well, it was pumping just the you. Customer service. Content. Yeah, it was just. It was just you. It was just me. You That's know? crazy. I had a couple guys behind the scenes that definitely like helped kind of keep things for sure. You know, but it was like very, very high profit business. Yeah. And uh, but like from a brand perspective. Like you were the face of the brand. You were the guy doing the content. Yeah. Like it's not like you needed this you crazy. Were the guy talking to them as well. Yeah. The answering the emails. There, like that's some there was fucking maybe impressive. three people behind the scenes. Yeah. Wow. Maybe three. Yeah. At that point. Yeah. At that point. And you're what? 23, 24. You said 23, 24. Are you kind of <laughs> like? Crazy. Are you kind of like <laughs> tripping out? Like, oh fuck. Okay. This is this is like kind I, of crazy. What's good, boys? We have to pause this episode to give you guys a very important message. Okay. The Super Bowl just ended yesterday. Crazy result. 
But that doesn't mean we're not betting, we're not dropping parlays, we're not having fun on Bulldog, okay? The party never ends. The boys are firing and everything's still running. We got all soccer back, we still got hockey, we still got basketball, we got important times for both of those. MLB is about to come up and of course UFC is always popping up. So we're not done. Just because football's done doesn't mean we're done, no? No, we're just getting started. We're just getting started, we're just All getting right. started. And if you are a Canadian and you sign up to Bulldog today, you will get a $400 welcome bonus, right? That means they're matching up to $400 of your money. Yep. Two bills, three bills, put 50 bucks. It's free. Whatever you can. Bet responsibly. They're gonna give you 50 free casino spins, all yep. right? It's pretty straightforward. They're just giving you free shit. Come join the boys, bet with the boys. And don't forget to use crypto when you withdraw or deposit. Makes it super easy, super quick to take out money, put in money. Lightning speeds. Yup. And with that, yep. let's get back to this episode. You know what? It was like, the growth was like very consistent. And then once that funnel happened, I started putting more into YouTube. It was just like, a, we had a one year, just 5X. And, and you know what? Like, uh, it was I'm trying to think like, if I, like, I, it just felt normal. I don't yeah, know. I, yeah. It felt really, really cool. I was like, holy shit. I started buying random ass shit. I started buying <laughs> hoverboards. And <laughs> we just, you know? <laughs> My family's like, what the hell is Greg doing? You know? <laughs> like weird they, shit. Just what was your family <laughs> saying though the whole time as you were, as you were building though? Um, they were like, uh, so at the very beginning, they're like, you need to go to school. Sure. Of this course. is not going to work out. Classic. Yeah, this is not going to work out. I had another family member. Another family friend that has done very, very well for himself. He's in LA and even him, you know, he went, he graduated Harvard. He was like, you know, you're making a colossal mistake wow. by not doing school. Really? And for a second, I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll go back to school. And then I was like, I was like, you know what? No one, no one understands me like I understand myself. Yeah. And what I know is that when I go to school, this is not the path for me to become successful. This idea of like meeting a couple people, getting a piece of paper, is that gonna determine whether I'm successful? Everyone has that piece of paper. It's not a big deal. I'm in class. My professor's not gonna teach me how to make money, Fast. okay? I look around left and right. These people are playing Farmville. <laughs> Farmville. They're, playing wow. Farmville. <laughs> they're, they're just like the, 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 I'm very into the mindset yes. and the energy and all of that. And it wasn't there. Yeah. I didn't see it at school. And then even if people were extremely hardworking, it's just that, what, what is the path? Do a four-year degree, do more school, get some job, work up the corporate ladder. Yeah. And then maybe in your thirties, you're going to be working all the time, making a solid income. It's just that was not the path, you know? Mm. You one know what? life, bro. We got one life. Yeah. You know you know what's funny is that like Andrew Tate has the whole thing, break free the matrix. I like at 1920, I saw the matrix. Yeah. I, I saw it. I was like, this is not and I and I knew like life is very, very short. Um, I had firsthand experience of that. And I'm like, I wanna I wanna do something that fulfills me fully. Yeah. Well, the the, the first step of breaking out of the matrix is the mindset, understanding that like, aware, man. that yeah. there's something else aware. outside of go to school, get the paper, get the job, have the kids, have the house, pay the mortgage and live, right? So when you kind of realize that at an early age, like 19, that's that's huge, man, because you're setting yourself up for like a great 20s. You know yeah. what I mean? And clearly it worked for you. Yeah. Like you, you put yourself in a position where 23, 24, you're making 100, 120K a month. You're making yeah, like guy nice. salaries that you had you gone to school Your and got the job. Salary, yeah. That's the fucking yeah. salary. Yeah. So did you, you dropped out? I did. Did you go and then stop? I did first year okay. and I don't want to say I dropped out because technically I was on academic uh, suspension. Oh. <laughs> 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 said, buddy, you're out of here. You know what? Like, cause if I, if I pass all my credits and had a good score, you know, I could, people could like be like, no, you got to do second year. You got to I wanted to have no <laughs> yeah. option. Oh, fuck it, I'm out. <laughs> I want to go to yeah. school. I'm on academic suspension. Yeah. So, so let me yeah. ask you this then in, in fitness, if there's, if there's someone out there, that's a young teenager, a young kid, yeah. I don't want you to say, don't go to school. You could say whatever you want. Yeah. Do you believe in, but you know what was funny about university was yeah. that, okay. Calculus, that stuff okay. went way over my head. Yeah. Okay. But as far as business, as far as sociology, I didn't go to class. Mm, yeah. exactly. I didn't study. Yeah. I show up. I'm getting 80%. Wow. Yeah. With nothing. Yeah. Yeah. 80, 80%. 80 I was like, my friends were like, what the fuck? Greg, how did you get 80%? You, I haven't been to class <laughs> once. I was like, bro, like it's like common sense. I don't know. Like, yeah. So do you, do you think that uh, traditional education is the way to go for someone that maybe want to take the same path as you? Um, um, traditional educate. Oh like yeah. Going to university or going to college when they know they want to be in the fitness world. Yeah, so 
my personality type, my style is, and the reason I got academic suspension was like, I did well in like two courses and everything else. I didn't fucking show yeah. up. Course. <laughs> it bowed, but the point is, is that I, I did well when I tried, when I know, I did well when I didn't even, get, as yeah. long as I showed up, <laughs> yeah, show, just show up. up. I show up once, we're, we're good. Um, but my personality type is I am extremely self-motivated. I'm hyper incentive, right? So in school, I did not see any incentive to work hard. Mm. The incentives were not there. When I'm actually incentivized and I see if I work really, really, really freaking hard, I can get this insane result. I have to be hyper incentivized. So, um, and I had a very clear cut idea of what I wanted to do. I didn't know exactly how I was gonna do it. I didn't know how I was gonna do it, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start with this, you know? Even I, I even realized I was following some fitness guys at the time. I'm like, you know what? I could get some clients. I could even train three or four clients at a time, charge them 50 bucks a pop. I already know I can make 200 bucks an hour um, with some serious it's effort. It's already proven. Yeah, you already yeah, did already, it. I've seen people do it. So I was like, you know what? <laughs> I know I have a path to get to this income. Um, and I just started I just started doing stuff. I just started kind of taking action, then like changing along the way. But for people that are wondering, should I dr not go to university? Um, I don't see the value in going to university unless the career path you want to do requires it. Yeah, yeah. doctor. You know? Doctor, lawyer, lawyer, engineer, yeah. you know, therapist, all of these different. If you actually want to do that, um, then you know that's then then definitely go to school. But if you're like not really sure, why do you want to put on all that debt or put in all that money? Yeah, you know? which, yeah, which and waste bad. fucking time. Waste. Yeah. That's Forget the, the thing. Debt, it's time. It's time, man, too, time. Imagine you spent time. another three years at school. A hundred percent. Fuck. That's a lot of time you're wasting yeah. not doing what you what you want to do. I know. I would have would have had the mill for like twenty eight. <laughs> not to, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So, just kidding. so how, do, how does um how does the brand Kino Body yeah. come come to life? Well, because you you have that like super viral video, the first video that yeah the Bruce went Wayne, viral. right? Yeah, yeah. So I which is unreal, by the way. <laughs> the so, video is great. Thank, yes, you know what? I I had a, my first mentor, and he was training these different guys to build fitness, uh, like to be fitness, uh, build fitness blogs, and be affiliates and make money online. And all of them are kind of just, they didn't really have a cohesive approach. And I wanted to build like a cohesive approach from day one. So Kino actually means movie in oh. German. So movie body. Um, oh, and so okay. I kind of like, I had like the lens through which I was, my business was run was look like a movie star, mm -hmm. but also don't live in the gym like everyone else. We want to make it a lifestyle. We want to be cool. Like, you know, James Bond. Um, and so what turned it into a brand, it just kind of happened very organically. I was producing lots of content. I stuck to this very simple theme. I taught people fasting, fat loss, lifting, putting on muscle in the right places. And it just kind of became a brand onto its own. And then when I was 24 and the money was getting pretty crazy, I was like, you know what? Like, I was like, I liked the movie American Psycho a lot with Christian yes, Bale. Yes, yeah, I yeah, was yeah, very yeah. into that movie. I liked that movie a lot. <laughs> And I'm like, you know what? That morning monologue is so dope. Yeah. I'm like, if I could make a Kino monologue that that if someone has never seen me before, they watch this video and they understand what I do, that would be gangster. Yeah. And then I, I went to this business dinner. I met uh, uh, with this guy, Vince Delmonte. His younger brother was um, like a filmmaker. Okay. And we started chatting. We really, really clicked. We started emailing. We went out for dinner. We, I told him my idea. And then uh, he kind of helped make it come to life. Sick. And that was that yeah. video. Cause that was, that was that the, video. Yeah. yeah. Even with the Hollywood body too. Like I didn't, I didn't see anyone. I still don't really see anyone like using that approach. Why yeah. do you think that that worked so well? You know what? I, 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 I loved, I had a passion for fitness. I also had a passion for movies. So I like mm -hmm. kind of being creative. Yeah. And, uh, and so my, at the time there were people doing ads on, on YouTube. There were six pack shortcuts. There was like the Ty Lopez yeah. ad. I'm like, you know what? Let's make an ad, but make it feel like a movie trailer. So I just kind of was, we were kind of innovating, you know, yeah. at the time, like that was like the first drone shot. No one had a drone shot. It's true, yep. it's people true, thought we're like, bro. was that a helicopter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was that a plane around your You know what? When they came over and we're shooting this video and he's got like a team of four guys. Yeah. And I'm like, what the hell is this thing he's pulling out? It's like, this is a drone. And yeah. dude, it was sick. That's unreal. I mean, I was yeah. watching that and I got super inspired. We were watching it together. We're like, damn, yeah. bro, I got to get jacked. But then you look at the year, <laughs> yeah. you look at yeah. the year that the vid also. was posted and you're like, yeah, like, what was that 2015? That was 2015, like December, 2015. And then the next month I see like you, I see Ty Lopez doing all these ads. I see, I see, I'm like, okay, 
there must he's not running these ads for no reason yeah so i i, I get my friend who's kind of a, like a nerd and I, I say, bro, you got to figure out these ads for me. I'll pay, I'll, like, I'll pay you. You know, you got to figure out this this Google ad thing. I don't want to, I don't want to do, I'm not trying to go <laughs> yeah, on Google yeah. ads and spend three yeah. hours looking at numbers and stuff. Um, and so I'm like, just run this ad and let's just see what happens. At the time it was so cheap and we start running it. And then all of a sudden, like my, my revenues just quadrupled. Really? We're getting great, you know, we're spending, you know, whatever, like, yeah, it, it was, it was nuts. I don't know. I forget where we're spending, yeah. but it wasn't even that much. It was like a couple thousand dollars a day. At that point, you didn't need to spend a lot. To, you didn't need to reach to. a lot. It was dude, different, I, different I'd be, times. Yeah. I'd be in Starbucks and there'd be like four girls looking over at me. Like they seen your ad. <laughs> they're looking over and they're like, literally were watching my ad. And, it's, and I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> That's and like, crazy. They're like, oh my God, you in a commercial? Because they think like I got hired for commercial. It's like my own. Like your model yeah. for the but commercial. But it was also the way you shot it looked like a fucking movie trailer. It looked like a movie trailer. And then when I walked downtown, like downtown Toronto, like at that when I was like 24, 25, like, it's the real Bruce Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> the real Bruce Wayne. You like yeah. that name, eh? That's yeah, the good, real. That's fuck like, with that. Well, you know what? I wasn't even like that same friend I hired to run ads. I was like, man, what should we title this? I was like, I don't know. I was like, so dog shit at doing titles. And he was like, real Bruce Wayne, intermittent fasting something. Mm. And uh, I was like, fuck, that's a good title. So I just, we just wrote that. For the title, just to get like, Bro, to we're, get the views. we're still learning about titles now. Yeah, the I'm fact that you so, were doing that back then, though, and like yeah. those kind of titles where it's like, yo, you gotta click this and no, watch it. No, because that right now. that hits. That's a massive mm. piece. I think of it's the whole, like three, the whole three and a half million views. Yeah, or three and a half million. And then someone made this epic spoof that has like half a million views. Stop. <laughs> Do you ever see the spoof? No. no. Oh my god. We're I gotta show you. It, we're gonna put it. We'll put, pull it put up. The, put the spoof. Yeah, dude, the spoof is freaking hilarious. Inheriting my parents' fortune has been the most powerful health discovery I have ever made. It has made staying lean and building muscle and pretty much life in general effortless. I can even afford to hire a model to stand in for my girlfriend. But uh, I, I kind of want to I kind of want to touch on the brand a little bit and sort of because I think there's a good connection to the brand and the way the world's going today. Obviously, the brand, your brand, you yourself, the brand is like very masculine. There's a very like masculine take to it. Yeah. Um, very alpha vibes. Like you, you see your content, you see your ads, you see the brand, you see all the see the uh, Trump book, the, the Trump book. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, we'll toss that up somewhere. Art of the deal. <laughs> Art of the deal. Exactly. It's very like fucking alpha masculine vibes. Obviously, you mentioned Andrew Tate not too long ago. We have a lot of conversations on the podcast, off the podcast about how everyone dudes are kind of turning into pussies just to be like the most upfront thing. I'm curious to see like your, like hear your take on the way the world's gone when it comes to that, just because it's so opposite of who I feel you are and your brand is, you know, you portray a certain image that I think uh, a lot of men need to fucking step strength, up and, and get into. Right. Message. So it's the world has gone in a weird way. And it's sort of away from that when, when, whereas since 2011, you've been pushing it. So I'm curious just to hear your, your thought process on kind of where we're at today with that in society. Yeah. You know what? A lot of my beliefs kind of were the seed was planted when I was very, very young. Okay. You know, with my father as a role model, you know, we loved watching all those movies, like the Sylvester Stallone movies, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, the idea as a man was like, one, like become very, very strong, like work very, very hard. That was my father kind of impressed upon me. Um, and yeah, you know, the world has gone in quite interesting. It's very, <laughs> very, very, very interesting. Even like this whole idea of political correctness, you got to tiptoe safe mm. zones. All of this is complete and absolute garbage. Yes. Um, and so people are so worried about being offended that we've lost the whole idea of being free. Yeah. yeah. Literally being free. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that as a man, um, there's a few things you need to do to become like successful. The first thing, and this is what most guys get wrong, right? Most guys get this wrong. They don't take responsibility. Facts. They want to blame. They want a victim. They want to complain. And the only way you can change is if you look yourself in the mirror and you say this, the place I am in right now is completely and absolutely my fault. I take complete responsibility. I could have made these different changes. And until you do that, you have zero power to transform. Yeah. Now, I think that it's that's a very good thing to do because don't you want to improve your life? Yep. The only way to improve your life is to take complete and absolute responsibility. And, um, and when you do this, your brain opens up. You start to see more opportunities. You get amazing ideas and doors swing wide open. But most 
guys, I guess for them, it's easier just kind of complain. Be the to victim. Victimize. Yeah. yeah, it's the victim mentality. 100%. We say, it, we say it all the time. I mean, I think the society today is incentivizing people to be weak rather than strong. Yeah. You know? It's everyone's, I've, I mean, Ant always says this, but everyone's kind of battling to be the most oppressed. Right. It's like, you need to be accountable in your actions. You can't just blame other people. And, and we've seen that a lot. Like that, we see that, that more and more as we continue to go on. And, and I think that comes from self-awareness. Like that's, yes. that's the big thing people don't have is self-awareness, you know? And, and, and we don't, we don't, we don't hold ourselves even as a community accountable. Yeah, you're walking around, bro. We we snap on this. Like you're walking around 500 pounds and you're blaming the world. Yeah, it's like no, dude. Like you're 500 pounds because you eat like shit. You don't work mm -hmm. out. You sit at home in front of a computer, a TV, video games all day. When do you finally wake up and say, "Hey, oh fuck, maybe I'm the problem. My yeah. actions are the issue." Right. So it's it, it's it's a crazy time we're living in. And and I and where I want to circle it kind of back to your brand is, have you ever felt like you've needed to tone it down? because it's kind of so opposite from your brand. Happy Dad is available at a lot of your local bars and restaurants. Go to happydad.com slash find to find a bar or restaurant near you so you can watch the games with the boys. I, it, here's the thing, okay? There's so many people doing content, right? Tons. It's completely and absolutely saturated that because people have gone in soft and because people kind of feel like they're freaking like they're walking on eggshells. If you know how to, you know, toe the line and be a little bit abrasive, like you can get attention very, very easily. Mm -hmm. Now you can go a little bit too far. Um, but people are looking, I think people are looking for someone to kind of stand up and say it how it is yeah. and speak with conviction and say, look, if you want to fix your life, you need to do X, Y, Z, you know, yes. people are kind of looking for that role model. Um, but a lot of society has become like, they start labeling things. You have this, you have that. Yeah. It's not your fault. It's this, whatever. And our society has also become more than ever. It was like this five, 10 years ago. It's even way more like this. It's all about instant gratification, right? Yes. yes. Even like, even social media, like I have to be very cognizant to like put my phone away to be able to focus because you're checking things every two seconds. You get your dopamine yeah. going and you're just like, you just kind of like a robot you're smoking weed every night. Your yeah. dopamine's blunted. You kind of wake up. You, you don't have that je ne sais quoi. Mm. You don't have the wow. Kino Mojo. Yes. You don't have the Kino yes. Mojo. That's what we were yes. waiting for. <laughs> yes. No, no, it's true. You're absolutely I, right. I feel like, I feel like we need more, more men like you. And I think that going back to even Andrew Tate, that's why he got so much attention because it yeah. was a different message that I think a lot of people have been, either waiting for or didn't even know that that was a, a mindset to have, right? Yeah. So do you ever feel like you have a responsibility as a man to other younger men that are maybe confused in this society? Um, I, I, I definitely, definitely feel, yeah, I definitely feel that responsibility. And I can, you know, I've done videos and I've I started doing some videos outside of fitness on mental health, dopamine, stuff like that. And sometimes those are the videos people appreciate the most yeah, for sure, from yeah. me. Like they're like, damn, this is like really, really helpful. Um, so I definitely feel like, you know, when you have a lot of people that look up to you, that follow you, um, that are influenced by you, then there's definitely, you know, some responsibility. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, for anyone that's watching and life is just going wrong, you're feeling down, you don't feel like you have control, you're waking up, you're not even feeling good, kind yeah. of feel down all the time. I think the number one, the very absolute first thing to do is get your health and fitness yes. started. That will affect your body, your energy, your mind. Once you have your fitness in a good spot, then it's easier to make start to level up your life yeah. and, and improve yourself. But if you do not have the fitness dialed, it's very hard to really make a change so like the very first thing to do is get your fitness handled, yeah. get leaner, get stronger, lift weights, eat right. If you want to do some fasting, um, do that. If you want to get your testosterone levels up naturally, use the Kino Mojo, but get your health and fitness on point. Your confidence will go up. Your energy will go up and you start to realize, holy, holy, holy cow. Yeah. I, I was kind of just existing and now I'm down 10 pounds. I'm getting stronger. Let me apply this very, cause you're strengthening the dopamine system. You're strengthening that like that work reward pathway. And then you start to be like, oh my, now, now if I work on this, maybe I'll get, maybe I'll start to improve too. Maybe I'll get those goals. The number one thing that allows, the number one thing that will enable you to work hard towards a goal or not even give a shit is self-belief. 
Yeah. If you have no self-belief, and most people don't have self-belief, if they have no self-belief, why would they work hard? Yeah. Why totally. would you put in the work? Because you, you think, well, I could work really, really hard, but I'm still probably not going to get it anyway. And so my father, what he impacted on me was he had insane self-belief. Absolute, any goal I set, I can get it as long mm -hmm. as I work hard. And so men have to have that mindset yeah. built in where it's like, you know what? I don't care what goal I have. I can absolutely do it. It might not be easy. It might not happen tomorrow, but if I put in the work, I stick to it and I work harder than anyone else, I will achieve that goal. When you have that self-belief, that's when life gets really fun. Yeah. yeah. And I think I think the more that you get those those little Ws, like losing that five pounds, losing that 10 pounds, yeah. you start to realize more and more that you're capable of doing more. 100%. So you can even start with something small. Start with going to the gym in the morning, like you said. But I want to talk even about the dopamine levels. And, and like, one more thing, and this actually relates to the dopamine level. One more thing is that, most people don't even know how to use their mind correctly, yes. okay? Because most most guys, okay. they have a goal, okay? You know, what, let's say you're 30 pounds overweight, you know? Let's say, you're, let's say you're 50 pounds overweight. You need to lose 50 pounds. They lose five pounds. They're like, well, I still got 45 pounds to go. I still look <laughs> like shit. I'm still this and that. They just create negative thoughts yeah. that disempower them. And then they're going to start screwing up their diet more. They're going to lose motivation to go to the gym. Yeah. What you need to do is... You have 50 pounds to lose. You lost five. You have 45 more to go. It's like, we're getting closer, baby. We're looking good. Yeah. I'm looking, even if you got some fat, I'm looking five pounds down, baby. Yeah, yeah. Woo. <laughs> That's what I True. would do. Yeah. You know, even if I was like, if I had zero muscle and I start lifting fucking 10 pounds, I'd be like, we're doing 10. You know, mm. we're lifting 10. Like we're getting close. Yeah. Even if you're so far away, that is what's going to ramp up that dopamine signaling. You're going to get excited. Yep. And our mind has so much power way more power than we realize facts it can influence fact. us on a deep cellular level you got to really love attraction push. baby yeah, yeah. Law of attraction. love yeah. attraction you got to really push yourself to be positive even in moments that you may not feel it sort of yeah. just like almost forcing yourself i could take anyone in the gym anyone in the gym like that's you know average shape and i could instantly make them stronger mm -hmm. with their mindset because most guys go to the gym they're like oh we're gonna grab the 50 pound dumbbells. It's gonna be a bit heavy. Maybe I'll get eight. I don't know, maybe. What am I gonna have for dinner tomorrow? Okay, we're doing this. Oh, fuck the gym. Okay, yeah. okay, lift. Bullshit. Yeah. If I did that, yeah. I would be. I would already be way weaker. Yeah. Okay, you gotta go into the set and be like, I'm a fucking machine. Yes. I'm a freaking machine. Yes. Yeah. yes. You know, and then you go into it and just like that, that the two, the, the polarity between those two thoughts yep. will make an impact on how strong you are. 100%. I it's agree like when that. you wake up in the morning, if you have a bad thought right off the bat, might have a bad day, you wake up exactly. happier, good thoughts, man, law of attraction. You put yourself in a good love position. It. Manifesting, but I love it. And, and even the goal setting, I think a lot of people, they don't set goals. I still yeah. think there's so many people out there that are not setting goals, whether they, they don't think it's worth it or whether they think it's a waste of time. So maybe in terms of goal setting, for someone that hasn't done it before, what advice would you give them? So what I do is I set, you know, three to five goals, usually um, a fitness goal, business goal, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and it's okay to start a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. um, I like to kind of hit the first goal and then my mind kind of gets bigger and I start to think bigger and then hit the next goal. Cause there's two things that some people do. I've seen this. Some guys that just haven't achieved much, they start to set some way too big goal. <laughs> yeah. It's like, bro, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like, dude, like this, like start with something like you can give yourself achieve. a winning chance, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Cause sometimes it's almost out of like, I, I'm just going to set such a huge goal. Like, cause they, un there's like an unconscious reason they go so big. Cause like they deep down, they know they're not going to achieve it. And they just, it's just a weird kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but just set a goal that excites you, that challenges you, but like you can do realistic, yeah. realistic, yeah. like yeah. start with that. Because again, it's all dopamine signaling. If you set a crazy massive goal, that's like completely out. Like it's good to have a big goal to strive for, but when you're starting, like set a goal that you can actually build that positive reinforcement. You want to get a win. Yep. You want your life to feel like I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. And when every time you win, you actually increase testosterone. Yeah. When you when you start losing, testosterone levels go down. So you give yourself the ability to start winning. And then as you get a bit of progress, set a bigger goal. Yeah. Set a bigger goal. Even if you're losing 50 pounds, let's lose the first five pounds yeah. mm -hmm. and then give yourself that positive reinforcement. And that's, what's going to make you feel like that's gonna make you feel like a million, million bucks. You, you, you I, I noticed like a, you say a lot of what you do and the way you think you, uh, you know, you, you accue that to your dad 
yeah. lot of it. A lot of the, the ways that you uh, move, the way you grew up, the mindset, all of that. I know he passed away when you were, when you were pretty 11. young. Yeah. Maybe walk us through that. Just being so young, I don't think I don't think we've had anybody on the podcast necessarily that's lost a parent that young. I can yeah. only imagine from the outside looking in how fucking hard that would be. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to like, it's hard to uh, you know, explain. Losing a parent when you're 25 years old is a completely different losing a parent sure. when you're 11. It's it's not even For comparable. Sure. Obviously, losing a parent at 25, 35 is hor- sucks, horrible and yeah. sucks and and very very sad, but. At 11, it just feels like your whole world is crumbling around you. It's, 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 that's the only way I can describe it. Yeah. It's like, it's very, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot to go through, um, for sure. And I was 11, but my father still had a massive impact on me. Mm-hmm. Um, he was working all the time, but we had like really good, like moments and, and times together and he instilled a certain mindset. Um, and when he, when he passed away, you know, I was 11 and, and, uh, you know, I just remember thinking like, you know, I, my, my father was the one that was supposed to show me the ropes and teach me all this real estate stuff. And, uh, you know, so I kind of have to figure this out on my own now. Mm-hmm. And I started reading a couple little, you know, business books and stuff like that when I was very, very young. But I kind of realized that my thought was that like, you know, had my father been here, I would have really wanted to learn from him and and and, of course. and, and work for him. And I'm like, you know, he's not here. I'm not going to be the genius at real estate. That's not my highest value. My highest value is fitness. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to, you know, what he did in real estate, I'm going to go and do that in fitness. Yeah. And that was kind of like my, my, uh, was your fire is my fire. And again, like, you know, it took a long time to get to this place, but like, I think that, you know, it's easy to say like, it should have been this, it should have been that it should have been whatever. I don't like that. That's, that's like negative talk. Um, what I kind of, you know, what brought me a lot of peace was kind of like, you know what? Um, I feel appreciative to have the father that I had to be able to spend those 11 years with him for him to have the impact on me. Um, and I feel very, I feel like the value of that, mm-hmm. yeah. you know? And I, I remember I did a, I did a- um, It's tough to look at it that way, man, but you're- <laughs> It's tough yeah. to look at it that way. But I remember we did some like celebration for him some years ago and a lot of his- good friends were there and I, and I, I was like, you know, I'll do a, I'll do a speech. Yeah. Um, and I was like, at the very end, I'm like, you know what? I would rather have my father for 11 years than any of you fuckers <laughs> <laughs> for a lifetime. <laughs> you know what, man? That's and that, you know, yeah, that's that honestly, that's, that's yeah. super. Wow. Like that's like, you gotta be a strong person to be able to do that because losing a parent, I think at that age, like you can go either way. You can go fucking way downhill yeah. and start like you, like, like we spoke about, like just blaming things on the world and blaming things on life. And, so the fact that you didn't go down that route, kudos to you, bro. And I mean, yeah. and I mean it's, you know, I also feel a, you know, a deep sense of, um, you know, honor and responsibility to, you know, do him proud. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. um, so keep the legacy sort of, going. Yeah, exactly. You, um, yeah, dude, like at such a young age, it's crazy. But, but again, like the, the fact that you've kind of like sat here almost this whole podcast and accredited a lot of the 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 reasons for your success to him and there was only 11 years together like that just speaks to the man that he was you know and and so yeah fuck probably better you had him for 11 (laughs) than the rest of those guys i was gonna say there's probably guys out there that that don't get anything from their fathers at all in 50 60 years Yeah. yeah so that's it's it's a it's a maybe it was a blessing i don't know but you took it the right way that's for sure man yeah you know and it's it's very interesting because um he worked all the time, right? He uh-huh. was completely and absolutely dedicated to his business. And so it wasn't like he was hanging around me every day playing, you know, throwing the baseball. Like we had very clear moments together, you know, Saturdays, Sundays, some vacations and stuff like that. But it wasn't like we were spending all this time together. Yeah. And I actually, you know, I actually kind of like, I actually think that that is, can be more powerful. Yes. Hun- yeah. You, you if you're with it. It, like we we say this a lot too because right? we were we we moved out of our our parents' mm-hmm. house and stuff like that. And we're like, I feel like I appreciate my relationship with my parents more that I'm not with them 24 seven. Hundred percent. Yeah. You get you get bored. You get annoyed with them. You're looking yeah. for things to nitpick. But but I think I think with a father and a son that dynamic when you like him going out and working and building this empire every day and you seeing that. Yeah. yeah, is actually where the value lies. Then when you have those one-on-one moments, you're remembering them even more, but you're looking and saying, 
dude, this guy was doing everything he could to build a legacy for me and his family, right? Mm -hmm. So there's so much value in that where it's like people, I think there's like this like misconception with families nowadays and it's like, you need to spend 24 hours a day with your child and that's the best way that they're going to learn. <laughs> it's like, nah, bro, if you're trying to build a fucking, you know, you're trying to make your son an alpha, you got to show him how you got to move as a man. Yeah, through example. Exactly. Not by just, yeah, through not just, not just talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Through action, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, and, and you know, that goes for everything, but I, I agree with that 100%. And then when you do have have those moments the one-on-one -on -one moments where you're having those deep talks and and whatever you like the words that come out of his mouth are like they hit you a hundred times stick harder with and speaking of like the whole masculinity thing like i actually love the idea of uh of me being the provider mm -hmm. me working all the time and being able to have a partner uh etc that doesn't work at all yeah that stays at home that yep. that that uh Take, raises the family that takes care of that. I actually like that style way more. Yes. When I see two parents and they're both working all the time, they're both yeah. the kids, they're fucking miserable. Yeah, yeah. And who's raising the kid, bro? <laughs> yeah. Who's like, raising the kid? Yeah. Was, well, was that, was that how it was? Right? Was that how it was with your family? Yeah. Was that yeah, the, yeah, the... yeah. My, my mom worked. And then, uh, you know, when my father was ready to have, when they're ready to have a family, she's, she's like, you're not working again. Yeah. You know, you don't like, it's no, I fucking yeah. love top that. G. That's top <laughs> G. Yeah. yeah. No, it is. That's top G shit for real, man. That's unreal, man. Um, I want to get back to a little bit of business too. So you do the programs, then you get into the sub scheme. And right? let me say one more thing though. Do it, let do me it, say one more thing. It. Say two more things, bro. This whole idea that like a woman staying at home, raising a family is like a lesser path is complete garbage. Garbage. Being a mom and raising, I'm one of five kids. That's a big wow. family. Wow. Wow. One okay. of five. So like being a mom, having five kids, that is, that is, I could not do that. Tougher than a job. Like, we yeah, when, when we went to like on trips or we went, you know, drive seven hours to Mont Tremblant. It's my mom getting five kids freaking ready. Crazy. Like that shit is way harder than anything yep. I do. Like it is, I couldn't imagine. Yeah. It's just this idea that like some people try and like perpetrate that, oh, you know, yeah, working at some insurance company and having a job and having a <laughs> boss is so much more valuable than raising children yeah. is absolute complete. You have to be stupid to actually think that. To believe that. It's it, complete. We, we say it all the time. Like I could never do the job my mom did. Yep. Never, 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 like in a million fucking years. I have a better chance of deadlifting a thousand pounds. But you weren't built for it. Like you weren't built for it. That. But, that's, yeah. but that's, and that's fucking my DNA. It's just not in me. And, and, I, and I, I've said this a million times on other episodes. I hate when women get put down for wanting to be mothers, for wanting to be stay-at-home moms and that being their aspirations. Because, bro, not every woman is built to be the fucking CEO of Google. It's true. There's yeah. a very tiny percentage of them. The rest of them that believe that have if, just been if, fucking. You know, you know what though? If I was, if I was the woman and I had the husband that worked very hard, I sit at home. I would fucking own that shit. All yeah. day, I would, baby. I would own that shit. All day. They'd be like, "Oh, you don't work." I'm like, "Nope, nope, <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> fuck no." Yeah. Oh, but, you will gotta work. <laughs> but that's tough, you know. <laughs> but the thing is, but the thing is, being a mom, I see it as a job. Yeah. yeah, I see that as a job. Twenty four seven job, dude. Yeah, literally. So Waking and, it, and it never ends. I'm sure you probably and still talk to your mom all the time and, yeah, and do no, that whole thing. Like it, it never ends. It never ends. You, you have yeah. the moment you have that kid. You're literally the mother of that kid, even when they're fucking forty. You're still a mom mm -hmm. to that child, right? So yeah, we always say that, and I hate that fucking, I hate that negative connotation on moms. It, it fucking it, it makes me sick to be honest. I'm gonna like because we think about our way. moms. That's why we, we we stop and we think about our moms and how much they did for us. And there's and there's like a clear cut like agenda in, uh, of course for what, for this narrative. It's it's not by accident. Yep. Of um, and again, like there's like, gonna be a subset of women that absolutely are very driven to work, and that's their highest value. That's priority. Bro, and like it's you know, like, fine. It's that's this, fine. It's totally yeah, fine. It's yeah. This fucking small. It's yeah, oh, it's this but I feel bad for some of the women that kind of get uh, the pressure and they the feel pressure. like, yeah, I should work. I, I should, I should prioritize this and don't worry about the family. And then they're 35 and then they're kind of like, fuck, I wish I played this a bit yeah. differently. Yeah. You know, are and, you single and, now? Yes. You're single. Single. Yes. Okay. And oh, you want to bring these talks? We can yeah. do it. Okay, we before we get to this, one more thing is I think with the relationship, the husband, yeah. the wife, not working thing, I think the fucking men as a whole need to also step up and be a little more masculine and a little more alpha because if you move like that your woman will be down to stay home like the same way yeah. your pops was like all right we're having kids time to raise a family you're staying home yeah and it wasn't like a question it was like this is what's happening because he's a fucking alpha he walked mm -hmm. in and he said this is what it is and then your mom was like yeah all right done let's do it 100%, 100%, you know what i mean so i yeah. feel like if more men moved with that attitude you would have a lot more women not falling to this narrative and, and feeling pressure to this narrative you know they'd be like yeah my husband's gonna fucking 
you know, uh, be the provider and I'm going to take care of the household. So we just got to, men, step the fuck up. Get some mojo in your life, bro. Get some fucking mojo Get in your life. Get some freaking mojo. <laughs> Get some freaking mojo. You know? Okay, so you're single. Yes. Yes. Um, Let's go. Love these convos. Yeah, like sometimes we bring relationship talks into this, you know, and, and we, we like to hear people's opinion on what they think about being in a relationship at certain points in your life. Obviously, mm -hmm. you're, you're a, a fucking killer entrepreneur, right? Have you noticed that have being in a relationship versus not has helped you or or vice versa um yeah i i've heard different like sides of the coin like yeah. i was having a business dinner with someone and they're like man like if i was single i couldn't work that hard like i couldn't like like they have their their girlfriend or partner and they just kind of work and like you know they're not having to run like if they were single they wouldn't be able to control themselves okay mm -hmm. um i've heard that um, one too yeah, yeah. yeah. i absolutely definitely i'm my most ambitious and work the hardest when i'm single yeah i that's fair, you know man. uh that said like you know maybe if you're the right partner it's different yeah. um but like right now in my life like i i work very very hard i'm very very driven when i'm single when i'm in a relationship i still like work quite hard but it's a, maybe a little bit less okay. yeah do you think it is important though to to have a partner eventually or yeah, good or question. Not. No, you know, I I think the idea of kind of being single in your forties and fifties and yeah. not having a family is completely and absolutely depressing. Yeah. yeah exactly. Um absolutely. I think having a partner, someone that you deeply love, that loves you, that you take care of, and vice versa, and you have experiences with and share life with, eventually have a family, I think it's probably one of the most beautiful things in life. So I think that's very, very important. I am very, very picky. I am very <laughs> you know because of your experiences in the past though? Um no, not necessarily. I think it's just like, like this who you are. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know what? I just like, like when I actually, uh, like I, I have to be like a, a hunt, like, you know, not All that I, I don't know if I'll ever get married. I probably won't. But if let's say I was to get married, I want to feel like I have the most beautiful girl mm -hmm. up there at the altar that I'm marrying yeah. Yeah. inside and out. And so my standards are very, very high for who I'd actually be with. And I've had some great girlfriends I've dated. We've been very in love. Obviously, none of those actually end up working out. Um, but uh, but like when I actually like I'm ready to find that next. Like my standards are very, very high. Is, is very, Miami, very high. Bro. You're in the yeah. right place. Right here in Miami, bro. No, is a is a family in the cards for you? Yes. Kids? I would have a kid right now. <laughs> right now, I'm having a baby. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's go. Send the fucking resumes <laughs> no, in. I, Send me the resume. Okay. So you're, you're, you're saying you'll, you'll do a family, but maybe not get married. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I would do a family, maybe not get married. Yeah. Why, I don't, what? I mean, on, on, why would I get married? Why? Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm curious. What's, what's your, what's well, the thought process behind that? Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, what's thought for you, for you, yeah. I'm saying of not, of not getting married, uh, yeah. or getting married. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're, you're saying you would the do comparison. the family, there's, not get married. There's, there's, why? there's no, there's no like actual reason to get married. Right. I just find like it, uh, it can complicate things. Um, Although, I mean, it, you know, in Canada, even if you don't get married and you're living together, it becomes common, common law. law yeah, yeah. But, you know, I just, I have some friends that just have a woman they love and they had kids and they just didn't get married. And I, I, I find them happier than those that get married. I agree. And there's so, something, there's something about it. I don't know what it is, but what, I feel like once you put the marriage title on it, there's yeah. like, there's just this. It's like added a pressure, pressure too, right? yeah. that like, added pressure that, that like the relationship doesn't yeah. need because if it was yeah. going well anyway did you hear about this new food that like completely destroys sex driving women no did you hear about it no, no. wedding cake <laughs> <laughs> I, thought you I, I thought you'd be fucking serious. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, bro, wait a minute, what? Jesus, bro. No, that's fucking jokes, bro. Holy fuck! You, you know what's funny? I actually, I, I saw a uh, comedian when I was here last week. Yanis Papas. This guy was hilarious, and he had this joke where he's like. Women, they always complain, you know, they have a husband and then their husband gets fat and he's out of weight and uh, he's out of shape. And why isn't he, you know, why don't men want to get in shape when they're married and this and that? And he's like, women, I blame you because you still fuck us. Yeah. He goes, <laughs> you don't make us work for it. We're married. We're together, whatever. I, I'm a fat slob and you're you still have, you fucking fuck us. Anyways, yeah, you're yeah. still <laughs> fucking us. It doesn't matter. It's so true. I don't need to take care of my health. Yeah. So women, I actually agree with that statement. Make sure your man stay, you know, keep well, your man yeah, in check. Yeah, yeah. keep Hold him accountable. accountable. Yeah. Make sure he looks good because then you're going to end up going to have an affair anyways with a fucking, with this guy here, with this <laughs> fucking shredded. This guy, and, and this, is, and you this is also a very important lesson for the, for the guys out there because it's very common. You get a girlfriend, you've been working hard on yourself, working out, taking action, Fall setting off, goals. Right off. Yeah, yep. you get the girlfriend 
And sometimes it's her that's like, oh, baby, you work so hard. Take it easy. Don't mm. work out. You know, you work too hard. And so you have the result, right? So obviously the benefit is like, okay, it's good to spend more time with you, X, Y, and Z. But then you're, when your life starts taking a dip, right? Yeah. Then it's very common for the girl to start to kind of become a bit more aloof, to pull yes. away as you start to fall down. So it's a man... It's your job to stay true and strong on your goals and your path, regardless of if you have a relationship. Even if your girl's like, yo, you work so hard. Keep working hard. Let's go, yeah, exactly. Work harder, you know? Yeah, that's where girls will even be like, oh, why are you going to the gym? You already- Why do you- You already have a, a yeah, girl. Yeah. You already have a woman. But if that's- But then <laughs> drop, that girl, yeah, drop, drop that girl. Drop that girl. Drop that girl right and away. every woman knows this. If they were to tell their man, oh, you work so hard, take it easy today. And they takes it easy. Oh, don't go to the gym today. And he doesn't go to the gym. You know, be soft. You be soft. They know that if he keeps doing that, their attraction fizzles. Yep. They on, want yeah. the guy to be like. I'm hitting the gym today. Yeah. I'll see you at eight o'clock. Yeah. yeah. You know, exactly. don't talk to me. Yeah. We'll talk too much settling me. going on. Bro. I agree with that. I Way too that. much. Settling. I want to, I want to talk about Mojo a bit though. We yeah, have, yeah. we have kind of, I want to, I want to get into the yes. subs too. I want to get into the Yeah. Subs. Yeah. So you well, started with, with some subs, right? I started with, yeah, some supplements. You did, um, which subs did the you do? Keno Octane. It's over there. So I did, yeah. I started off with, um, so it was very, very cool. I started with just my fitness programs. And then, uh, about four years ago, um, a, a business part of the time was like, you know, Greg, like, do you ever want to like do supplements? I'm like, well, you know what? Like I'd be very down to do supplements as long as I can create my absolute own formulas. I don't want to white label some, some shit that I don't like. Cause I'm very picky, um, with my women also with my supplements. <laughs> there you go, as you I don't be. want any, yeah, <laughs> I, I want the correct doses, no That's artificial amazing. ingredients. Amazing. And so he's like, dude, we can do that. We have, I, I, I have a manufacturer, like one of the best manufacturers in Southern California. We can make anything you want. Wow. Um, and so we started making the first little pre-workout and I was like, you know what? Like at the time I was just drinking coffee and training and I'm like, okay, this might be cool. Let's try it. And then we got the samples of all the ingredients that I wanted in the l citrulline X, Y, and Z. I was like, holy shit, I feel good. Yeah. And I got addicted to the octane. And then like a lot of my audience and customers, they started to buy it and then they started loving it. And then we did like a, a collagen protein, did a couple other ones. And then things have gotten literally insane when in August of um, this last August, what, four or five months ago, we launched the Mojo. Yes. yes. The Mo, and you know what's funny is that like, I am very into my names, like uh, my Kino body, yep. my names, movie star body. And so I'm like, you know what? There's, there's different people doing like testosterone supplements and they have like these hardcore names from it. I'm like, what are we actually doing? Okay, because with the testosterone supplement, you're not tripling your levels. You're not five yeah. Xing them. Um, you're increasing it by like whatever, 20, 30%. You know, we've had some guys increase their free testosterone by 50%, but you're getting that 20, 30% increase. Now, what is that actually doing? Okay. Yeah, sure. You're gonna have a bit more energy. You're gonna wake up with the iron rod. You're gonna have more sex drive, but you're gonna have that je ne sais quoi. Mm. You're gonna have that. I'm thinking about what's the fucking name? What feels right? And I was like, Mojo. Of course. Yes. The yes. Mojo. Of course. And it just felt right. And then uh, and then we got all the ingredients I wanted in it. The three minerals that are great for testosterone, zinc, magnesium, and boron. And zinc and magnesium, you're lifting a lot, you're training, you're sweating, you're having sex, you're depleting those levels. It's actually, most people are actually very deficient in uh, magnesium. magnesium. And yeah. even though I eat meat, I got my uh, nutrients checked and I was still a bit deficient in zinc. And then boron, if you take more boron than like you actually need, it can help with testosterone levels, help reduce estrogen. And then the one really, really cool herb, which actually I was uh, checking out a lot of stuff by Andrew Huberman, who's really, really good in neuroscience. And, and he was kind of digging in a lot of the Tongata Lee benefits. And Tongata Lee is a herb we included. Okay. That's very good at increasing testosterone. It, but it like, there's a lot of people that have just taken Tongata Lee and they can raise their total testosterone hundred points, hundred to 200 so points. He was on, he was on Rogan talking about He was about on that, Rogan. Right? Yeah, and then four is the other herb, which I really, really like, um, which has fat loss benefits and also can increase. And the combination of these five, it like you feel Be a profound small, difference. Eh? Bro. Well, that, that's what I wanted to ask. Like, can you explain the feeling? <laughs> yeah. So the benefits. So one of the clear cut signs of having higher levels of testosterone is you have a higher increased sex drive. Mm. So if you ever remember as a man, you guys remember when you're like. 14, 15, and you're yeah. just fucking getting boners all oh, waking up in the morning. Yeah. Oh, fucking rocket ready and, to go. And then at 25, 30, you never quite feel like you did yeah. at those like earlier yeah. kind of uh, years. And uh, you start to feel like your sex drive is doubled. You know, that this, you, you get a bit more like, what's the word? Like intensity, okay. yeah. you know, when you, when you, you get more excited to train. So one of the cool things with testosterone is that testosterone makes effort feel good. Okay. Pushing mm -hmm. yourself feels good. So some of those guys are just so freaking, they don't want to push themselves. Oh, the lifting the weight, mm, it's uncomfortable. Like that's never even, like I like it, yeah, you know? Yeah. When you're working, like testosterone makes effort feel good. So um, that's one of the other benefits. You get a bit more excited to train. Um, and then with the magnesium and one of these ingredients, um, it actually helps improve sleep quality. 
That's so you, huge. you get and then that's, sleep. I, I, yeah, bro, get, got, get this I guy some fucking sleeping, mojo, dude. I got issues sleeping. Bro. Yeah, when you get a sleep doll, it's really really helpful. Yeah. What do you so it's one a day. Yeah, I take, day. How do you take it? Yeah. Take three caps, um, with your first meal of the day. Okay. That's cool. So Done. yeah, then you can do it with day. breakfast, or if you break, if you fast with your first meal of the day, I might have to every day. Shit. Well, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna text my guy right after. I'm gonna send you guys the mojo. Yeah, we need. I'm gonna send you some mojos. We need some. That's crazy. This, I think I think a what lot of males need this right now. What does it go for? What's the you, know, you know what's very, very cool is that I, I started telling my followers, I'm like, look, before you get mojo, get your blood work checked. Go yes. to the doctor, get your total free testosterone checked, LH, FSH, these different um, hormones checked. Okay. And then go on mojo for two or three months, get your levels checked. And, go back, and so yeah. I've had about eight people do it. And literally these guys are getting 20% increase. We've seen a 30% increase. Even in... So, so, uh, one of the ideas is that, oh, if your testosterone levels are already, uh, you know, medium or high, you won't be able to increase it that much. We had a guy that had 800 uh, nanograms per deciliter total, and he went up to 1,000. But his free testosterone, which is really what's most important, yes. was actually around 12 nanograms per deciliter, which is not that great. And it went up to like 18, 50% increase. So wow. guys that already have healthy, high, high testosterone are seeing really good improvements. Yeah, bump it up. Men need yeah. more of it well, nowadays, I think with everything, bro. like even the food that everyone's eating nowadays and shit. And I saw some, I, I think I told you, remember? It was like a, a meme or a tweet, but it's like, I don't remember seeing anyone obese before the 70s. Right, right. And it's just like, they're talking about obviously the food that we're eating yeah. nowadays and, and, and the fucking shit that we drink and just the shit in the air. So- this is important. Well, it's yeah, a mojo. And you know what? The the boron, the Tongat Ali actually is very anti estrogenic and in the environment, we're exposed to high amounts of estrogens yes. um and horn, hormone disrupting chemicals. So this is a good insurance policy against like, you know, existing in this environment with all these different chemicals. Phthalates are even in food Phthalates, and plastics dude. and stuff like in that. And your your fucking there it's in your soap, it's in your fucking toothpaste. Yep. So I think, yeah, I, I was gonna say I think with the world that we're in today where we don't have and, much options in yeah. terms of those things. You and really got to focus on And you on can try show. and cut out a lot of that stuff, but you can't, you can't be 100% perfect in this day and yes, age. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, I know, because it's everywhere. It's so how about, everywhere. how about even the program? Because I think it's super interesting that, you know, I'm sure a lot of people out there that are preaching fitness programs and stuff, they're saying, you know, you got to get be in the gym every day. Yeah. And then you said, nah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. said, no, 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 we're not yeah. doing that. So maybe explain how you were able to build that and what goes into it. Yeah. Um, and also I want to talk about the fasting. So- Fitness is actually very, very simple. There's, you know, you're trying to do two things, right? Support muscle growth, build muscle and stay lean or lose fat. So as far as gaining muscle, what really is required is progressive overload. You have to get stronger. If you're lifting 80 pound incline dumbbells, we got to get you to 85 okay. mm -hmm. to 90. That will trigger an increase in muscle growth. Now, as a natural, the idea of being in the gym every single day, two hours a day, an hour a day and training actually causes more muscle protein breakdown than buildup. Um, it can very easily cause more breakdown. So I actually find for naturals, when you lift very heavy and you do a little bit less, and you because if you train, so if you're doing five sets of this exercise, seven, eight exercises, it's so much, it's hard to pour in pure focus and intensity. So I find by doing less, really focusing on like key lifts, pushing hard on each set, it's easier to hit personal records. You create the perfect amount of fatigue breakdown. Your body has enough time to replenish, to rebuild. So I, for the longest time, was lifting three days a week. And I was doing, you know, four or five exercises, pushing hard, tracking my workouts. And I got way better results doing that than training four or five, even six days a week. Wow. And every workout became a game. I was, I was just breaking personal records and all of that. Now I lift twice a week. Wow, I do really? two, two lifts a week. I do some walking. I may do a little boxing. Um, and that's literally it. Damn. But two, twice a week. Fucking so up. it's a mixture of that and the mixture yeah. of obviously like the eating. Of course. The e and the eating again. So if you want to optimize for fat loss and, and leanness, it's really about your calories. Yeah. You got to keep the calories in a bit of a deficit mm -hmm. um, to get leaner. And that means you need to understand how many calories you burn, which it's very easy to predict based on your how big you are in your activity. Um, and then you got to be eating a little bit. You don't want to go too low. Is also if you go too low, your testosterone levels can go, can go down. If you burn 2,600 calories and you're like telling me, I'm going to eat 1,600 calories a day, I'm going to say, absolutely, that's not the, the move. Yeah. You know, eat 22, 2,300. Okay. Um, and then you got to get enough protein to support muscle growth. And you do want to have a balance. Like, I don't believe in any of like this super low fat, super low carb. You always will support the highest level of testosterone when you have a balance of fats and carbs. Both are required for hormonal function. Um, so I like to eat a balance and I focus on lean meats, fruits, veggies, potatoes, eggs, yeah. stuff like that. And then I like to fit in 20% 
whatever I want, chocolate, mm -hmm. cookies. So I keep my calories dialed in, like say 2,300. And then I might eat like, you know, 18, 1900 calories of whole food. And then I have an extra 400 calories of whatever I want. So just fuck around. Yeah. yeah, yeah Cause yeah. you know what? Like, Honestly, I have a lot less willpower than people give me credit for. <laughs> <laughs> well, they probably see what this guy, they, yeah. like, this guy probably eats perfect. They think that I know they yeah. think I have way more willpower than I do. So like I, if I just try to eat perfectly clean, you know, you wouldn't enjoy life, bro. I, I wouldn't enjoy <laughs> life. And like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be like, man, like I, I didn't hit the spot. So I'm going to eat more calories yeah. of yeah. healthy stuff to try and feel satisfied. But, Whereas if I just have that little bit of chocolate I can fit in, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm cool at 23. But if I don't have it, I'm like hitting 28, 29, 3000. Yeah. So when I when I did different, like very pure healthy diets, like the paleo diet, stuff like that when I was younger, I, would, I wouldn't hit that sweet spot. And then I would just kind of keep eating. And then I'd kind of end up, cause I have a bit, dude, I can eat so much. <laughs> yeah. I can eat a lot. So I could easily eat like well over 3000 calories, trying not to eat that much. Uh -huh. um, so I just found programming in that, that little bit of, you know, and you gotta be careful. Like if there's certain foods, if I try and eat it, I'm gonna go back for seconds. But yeah. if I have like a little chocolate almond bar, a little Magnum ice cream bar, eat that a few hundred calories and I'm like, I'm good. I feel yeah. good, yeah, yeah. Would you would you attest some of your success to that? I mean, just making something realistic for people yeah. instead of fucking so hard, Yeah, which you know I think what? a lot of people do out there. And what? that's the kind of the main thing is that like, a lot of people that have kind of percolated to the top in fitness are like, you know, bodybuilders and extreme like fitness people yeah. that are doing competitions and can be, they're completely rigid, but even them, they know it. They, they screw up a lot. Yeah. No one is a hundred percent perfect a hundred days in a row. They, yeah, they mess up. They binge eat. They do contests. They gain 25 pounds. They, they're running down this rabbit hole and their, their mental health is pretty fragile. It's yeah. pretty, a lot of those people that they're, they're very, very fragile. I will be upfront and honest. I, every time I've done an intense cut, even now, I'll still have a day where I kind of screw up a little bit, yeah. you know? But the main thing is that like, we're human, you know? And when I coach my clients, I have, I have clients that I coach in my coaching program. And I, one of the first lessons I tell them is, look, I am not coaching robots. I'm coaching human beings. So yeah. I actually do not yeah. expect any of you to be perfect hundred days in a row. I've never been perfect hundred days in a row. The main thing is that, you know, the main thing is that, you know, let's dial this in, let's make it a lifestyle. Let's hit the, be in the ballpark once every couple of weeks, you know, you might go a little bit over. Don't worry. Still accept headed it. in the right direction. Yeah. The, yeah. the worst thing that people do is they are so rigid. Like, a, like, a, like imagine if a, buildings are built to sway a little bit, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, but they're so damn rigid and they're like, I have to hit this. I have to eat yeah. perfect. And then sure enough, willpower is a finite reserve. It runs down. Sure enough, they give in. They eat something. And instead of being like, you know what? I went over a little bit. It's not the end of the world, you know, yeah. went over, like I'm still in the deficit or, you know, I still have tomorrow, you know, I'm just going to be at maintenance today. Let's just keep rock and rolling. I feel good. Like I, you know, I enjoyed this extra freaking, you know, this extra bit of food. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I feel a little bit better, but I'm going to get back on tomorrow. Instead of doing that, which is actually what you want to do. They'll be like, fucked up. I, I ruined the whole day. I ruined the week. I'm a yeah. failure. Why'd I do this? I watched the movie, the whale, which is a very, very good movie. Yes. Yeah. yeah you yeah. see that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it goes into sort of like the psychology of the binging. It can mm -hmm. get wrapped up into the motions. That's why earlier when I was telling you, like, if you lose five pounds, like I'm the, you got to keep reinforcing happy that. about it. Yeah. If you let your mind slip in a negative place, it will hold you back to, to the person that you, Facts. that you were. So mm -hmm. I, uh, so I kind of have to coach people to like, literally, if you mess up, be chill. You're only human. Like, let's learn from it. Okay, why did, what happened? Hey, you know what? Maybe you've been in a deficit for a while and your body actually needs more calories. Certain yeah. hormones, right? If you're cutting for very, very long, there's a hormone called leptin that will start to plummet, right? Mm -hmm. And when that plummets, it's very easy to eat tons and tons of food, right? Mm -hmm. It's very easy to go, like, because when I used to have, when I used to try and diet way too hard when I was 19, 20, I would literally, uh, I would be, uh, I already had a decently low body fat. So when I restrict my calories too much, I could eat like seven, 8,000 calories. I felt like I had zero control, That's but, it, but it was a hormonal thing that was happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I yeah. like that you said too, you said willpower like eventually runs out as yeah. well. That's, I never heard that before. That's, that's yeah, willpower. <laughs> will, like, oh, it all makes sense e now. E e e it e all makes sense now. Life makes even, sense now. Even like, even like uh, you know, making decisions every day. You make too many decisions. Like a lot of extremely wealthy people, they just wear the same shit every day. Yeah. They yeah. eat the same, either they skip breakfast, or they eat the same breakfast every day. I try and eliminate a lot of menial decisions. You yeah. know? That's like Steve Jobs. That was his thing. He wore the same jeans and shirt and shoes every day because he's like, I have super important decisions to make. And I can't even what think I, about what I'm going to wear. What I'm going to wear should just be, it was like a well, uniform. It's, it's mental so space, right? You got to you gotta decide where you're going to use it on. And certain people in biz, like certain people, I, I've seen them become control freaks and they don't let their people, their team actually like, 
feel free to actually make it. Uh, if someone asks me a question, I'm like, bro, you decide. Yeah. You, I don't know. You pick. Bro, I, I don't want to make a decision. Yeah, yeah. You, for, you decide whatever you want. I, I, had, I literally had a Zoom I wanna, call you know. today about this where I'm like, yo, to, to our team because we were Unless a girl asks you, uh, where are we going for dinner? <laughs> oh, don't tell her. No, no, no. You better decide. You better decide that. No, I'm speaking to that. I actually want to talk a little bit about your business in general. I want to know a few things, a few questions I have. How big is the team? Yeah. How many people work, work, you know, on, on, on the business. Um, and then I'm curious, like what's your best product, which thing brings you the most revenue and we'll kind of go from, yo, there. we're giving away my secrets. Man. <laughs> These are my secrets. They still won't do it. They still won't do it. Um, so my team right now, it's kind of, um, I've about four guys in Toronto, um, nice. that work with me behind the scenes. I have uh, three or four different people that I film and, and shoot and do content with. Um, I have, you know, a customer service team as well of like five people. Um, I have, um, right now it's actually kind of crazy, but I have a few different advertising teams, wow, um, cool. some in California and, and Colorado, um, that run different ads for different offers. Um, um, I'll leave it at that. You know, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I can keep all of them, but if yeah. they're watching this, we're keeping you all. <laughs> <laughs> I, you, no. know, you know what? Someone's getting cut by next month. Yeah, somebody's done. We got well. we to <laughs> we we cut the fat. Okay. Um, but I have a few different ad teams right now. Just kind of, just kind of testing what, what's best. Um, and then I have, you know, I have a, a coaching offer, right? Um, so you can actually work with me, my team of coaches and sort of, instead of just doing my program, you actually get like to be in my little bit of an inner circle. Cool. And with that coaching offer, we have, you know, people, um, we have, a, we have a team of guys, six, seven, eight guys that are calling up my customers, checking in with them, um, seeing if they need extra support. And then we have like our, you know, a team of four or five movie star body consultants that are taking on these calls and, 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 wow. and seeing if they're a good fit for my coaching program. So like all in all, um, and I, I'm sure I'm leaving people out. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't even know what my, like, <laughs> bro, I don't, I, yeah, yeah, I know yeah. a lot no, less about my business. That's people a, think that's a crazy I'm just like, bro, let's give me, I'm shooting some, <laughs> shoot some videos. I do some social media. Yeah. You guys, you know, figure it out. <laughs> you guys figure yeah. it out. Let me know if I, if I missed anyone, I apologize, you know? Um, and then in terms of like, obviously your business has a bunch of different avenues of revenue. Which one would you say is your most lucrative brings in the most? So like the programs were like extremely lucrative for a very long time. Like there uh -huh. was quite a few years where it was like, felt like I was printing money to be honest with you. Yeah. I literally felt like this is, this is printing money. This money's spend, gotta be illegal. Yeah, like, I was like, <laughs> this is not. And then you saw Canada and you're like, no, yeah. they're printing money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're printing money. <laughs> they're fucking, <laughs> <laughs> but um, so that did extremely well for a very, very long time. Um, uh, and then like, I'd say like the very first summer, uh, the very first like, um, uh, summer, um, of like when things were locked down. Right. Um, that's like, was like the peak. And then after that, you know, that hasn't been as big of a part of the business. It still does well. Mm -hmm. Um, it still does quite well, but nothing like it did before. Um, and the internet business has changed very constantly yes advertising gets more and more and more and more competitive so to like to for me to spend a bunch of money every day on running like a an offer to a workout program is going to be hard to really scale and compete um in some capacity um but the definitely the and i have a clothing line too right and i, I haven't yes. really mentioned it clothing line is cool yeah. i don't do it to make money i do it for me i like the stuff that we make the kino warriors they transform they You're get some cool right stuff this is, it. This, is a, this is our sick like pants yeah, like so comfy. This is one of the shirts we did. That shirt looks un like so it's, comfortable. Yeah. You know what? You know what it is. I'll go shopping. I'll go find some sick thing. And I'm a very simple guy. If I find something I love, I want to wear it again and again. Yeah, yeah. And then it's gone. I, so I, I find the cool shit I like. I give my boy Devin it. I'm like, bro, this is sick. Let's tweak this. Yeah. And then I just have it for whenever I want. Yeah. yeah. Dev so, Hamilton, no? Dev Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. Shout, shout out. out Dev. Shout out Dev. Shout out Dev. <laughs> Toronto, man. Daddy Dev. <laughs> Daddy Dev. <laughs> That's cool though. But it also helps obviously your brand and stuff. I'm sure it's there's brand. a lot of people that see. And like when guys transform their body, they, they start to look like movie stars. They can wear my clothing. They know it fits mm. well. They know if they go on a date, they walk down the street, they look good. Um, but that's more for fun. Obviously, like the supplement business is like, what's really cool, the supplement business is like, A, you know, with a clothing line, look, you can buy it. It might not fit you well. Yeah. You, maybe you like this shirt. You don't like that. The supplement, I'm a simple guy. Supplements, you know, you make one product, you make it amazing. People like it. They take it. You don't need to do new colors. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, okay. that's, a, that's yeah, the best yeah. part. We're not yeah. doing any new mojo colors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's it. It's very, you know, and they and they they love it. Like if, if you buy a shirt you love, you might not need to buy another shirt for six months, a year, yeah, right? Yeah. So with a supplement, you know, you take it and you want to keep getting the benefits, keep getting the results, keep feeling amazing. You take it every month. So it's like, 
you know, you have to work hard to get that customer, but that customer is staying for they a long forever, time. Yeah. Yeah. And I've tested like, you know, and I, I've done like the pre-workout, the collagen protein, a couple of little like workout muscle building supplements like that. And then we did like a brain supplement, which, you know, I really like taking the brain supplement and, you know, we launched it and like people liked it. It did well. But like when I launched like our mojo and our latest supplement night show, like people like I can see the difference. If I post about something, I can see like the numbers. Yeah. And when I when I post about like mojo or nitro, and I think that's the kind of my brand, guys wanna they wanna look hotter. You see my transformations, they, say, yeah. they not even just their body, their face. They look yeah, yeah. They, they look way better. And so guys that they, they want to look better, they want to be more attractive, they wanna like have that mojo, they wanna have that extra blood flow in the gym and in the bedroom. Yep. So like the Mojo on Nitro just, it flies. Crushing, we, eh? we sold, we ordered Nitro to last us for months and it sold out in like a few weeks. Wow. Yeah. So. And, and all your stuff is just online right now, right? It's completely and absolutely online. Um, And uh, you know, so right now with Mojo and Nitro, the challenge has been keeping on the shelves. We're doing bigger and bigger orders. And even, you know, we did like a fifth order of Mojo and like, and we have inventory now, but like we've every order, we've increased the order size substantially and it's still sold out and yeah. we just got it back in. Um, so Damn. we we're, we're just working on keeping it in, in the shelves. Now at a certain point, we're gonna look at uh, potentially going in stores, but cool. like we do great just kind of marking it um, yeah, on my brand, consumer, yeah. yeah, paid traffic, stuff like that. But, um, but uh I am definitely open to getting in stores. I have a lot of customers say, man, I'd love to buy it in stores and stuff like sure, that. Yeah. Um, although I know like 2022, like I buy all my shit online. Yeah. I don't yeah. even want to go into a store. True. You know, I just like, I like to, I like packages showing up in my house randomly. Yeah, boom, pick you know, it up, you like, know what it is. Like you're like, going like, to yeah. feel, yeah, you're going to feel <laughs> way happier. Like just, you know, on a Tuesday, you're chilling, you're working from home, a package comes, you open it up. It's Mojo. Mojo. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so online, are, are, can people, like, is it a one-time purchase or is it like subscription based? Yeah. So you have two options. You can buy it one time, or if you want to save, you know, 20, 25%, you can join my subscription. Oh. And the cool thing with subscription is because we sell it a lot, we always make sure that um, we don't oversell so that everyone that's on subscription Can keeps getting their cool. bottles every cool. month or two months, whatever. You just allocate a bunch just for your subscribers. Boom. Exactly. In so I'm going to hook you guys up. Yeah, I got to try I'm this shit. I might OD tell. on it, bro. <laughs> yeah, I might. Oh, yeah, you know what's funny? It's 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 three caps a day, yeah. but I've been fucking motherfucking <laughs> four capping it. I'm motherfucking four capping it. <laughs> I'm in Miami. It? We four yeah, capping yeah, four capping. So don't be quad capping on me. No, I'm, uh, I'm curious, like f from a business perspective, maybe you know the answer, maybe you don't, but do you have an idea of like to date, let's say from when you first started Kino Body, uh, like revenue, like what's your like to date revenue? Oh, combined, combined of, if, if of you had everything. To, if you had to make yeah, a guess. yeah. I, I mean, I, I could. I mean, I started in 2011. Um, wow. You know, we didn't do our first mill until uh, uh, I think year five. Okay, okay. which is still um, fucking the, unreal. All the first four years combined was maybe like 300, and then uh, I think it was like 50 mil or something like that. Wow. Um, Good for you, but, bro. Amazing. But like, I will be honest. These last few months, I've two and a half X my company. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. So like, wow. oh, it's, it's, it's okay. the numbers. What do you where, attest that to? Like, what's, what's that? What's the reason for that? Um, I just like, you know what? I just like, I just, you know, my girlfriend and I, we broke up and I was like, it's time to go back to work. I was, no, I was doing fine. You know what? I was doing fine. I, I actually, um, I started working with, um, you know, a good friend of mine. We started helping with the coaching offer, okay. which has done very, very well. And clients are getting amazing results. I launched the Mojo. I've been going harder on content. I've been putting in like, putting in a hundred percent and, uh, and you know, the stars are aligning right now. But I feel it's like in business, you, like when, when you've been unreal. going, when yeah. you've been going for 10 plus years, yeah. you have those moments of like, you're fucking super dialed and then it kind of dies a bit. Then you got to get fucking dialed again and it'll die a well, bit. Even but the that's, first that's four normal. years, you said 300, you know what, it was a thousand. And then all of a yeah. sudden, yeah. so like th during those three, four years, you could have easily said like, uh, I'm not doing as well as I thought. Right. Yeah, my uh, first year I made ten grand. The second year I made thirty grand, and I, I was I was like, bro, I'm improving. We're getting yeah, better. Yeah, and everyone around me was like, yo, you're making like what ten grand? Like, like, dude, this isn't gonna work. <laughs> That's out. when they were yeah. saying, go to school and yeah, shit, go right? to school. <laughs> you know, you're making. You know, how are you gonna do this? I mean, I had I have to give credit where credit's due. There's been a couple like different family friends that were supportive. You know, I remember Good. you know uh, shout out to Bill O'Payton in L.A. But um, I linked up with him quite a bit when I was in L.A. And I remember like at the time I was young and I was I got to four four thousand bucks a month online. And he's extremely successful, very very successful. And he was like, "Oh shit, okay, you're, mm -hmm. you're making some money online." You know, I was like, "Okay, you're, you're doing something." Like nice. he, he he says like that's real. 
Um, and then like, you know, another, another kind of, another, another kind of person, um, was just like, he was like, dude, like, you know, cause like, I, it's, you do, you do get support he, cause yeah. I get these envelopes from ClickBank coming in with my, and he's like, bro, I've seen all these people try to make money on in, online. You're the only person that actually gets checks. <laughs> yeah. from the internet. Even though it was like a few hundred bucks. Like, yeah, that's yeah. incredible. So yeah. there was some support. Yeah. Um, but, but, uh, for the most part, yeah, for the yeah. most part until, you know, <laughs> until like I had legitimately had people like working for me and like I had, I was hiring employees until my business was like very validated until I had motherfucking lawyers, motherfucking mm. counting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's lawyer, shit fees, gets real. lawyer fees, you know, That's until all that stuff, real. like, you know, um, my mom was definitely the hard, most hardest to turn around. She was in her head. She's like, you know, um, my you know, my husband or her father yeah, isn't yeah. here. It's my kind of job to like really be hard on him. And she was like, you need to go to school. That was like kind of what was drilled into her brain, you know? Yeah. But also my grandma Patsy, she passed away quite recently. Sorry. Um, that, grandma Patsy, she, uh, she was like, you know, Gregory, she told my mom, Gregory's just like his father. He's what he's doing. He's yeah. amazing. Like she, she, you know, she could oh. see it. Maybe she's a little bit outside of the trees sort of. Yeah. Um, but she, you know, she, she was actually in a couple of my YouTube vlogs when I was much younger and people loved her. Show Grandma, Grandma Patsy. Patsy, baby. Grandma, she, Grandma Patsy, Patsy. Patsy black beauty. and white, says it how it is. What a beauty. She was even chirping me in one of my vlogs. She was like, <laughs> she's like, Greg, you're using um, ah, <laughs> don't use um and ah. It's like true. just, it's yeah. true though. It's true. Yeah. That's amazing. That's yeah. how, how important are those, are those like two, three people that support you at the beginning? Like, you know what? It really, it really, really helps. I think like yeah. you, it's when you're, especially when you're that young, in some sense, you are looking for a little bit of validation, a little yeah. bit of approval. Like you're kidding yourself if you don't care about that at all. Of course. We're human beings. Of course. We want a little we bit. Need of, it. We need, we need it, a little yeah. bit. I think like maybe it's funny because like that little bit of um, those people that gave me support, I really appreciate it. But sometimes, you know, sometimes it can also be like the negative support that motivates you. Like I think yeah. even, I think my mom, obviously like, I think her style of kind of being hard on me maybe made me want to work even prove harder to, to prove her, to prove it. Like, yeah, but she kind of like, the, she started to give me validation when her friends and family friends were like, oh my God, it's amazing. The, 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 the guys that, you know, he's transforming all these people. It's insane. I saw this interview, I saw this. And then my mom, that, but like it took a very, very long time. But I think like the, the, the cause here's the thing, like this idea that you're gonna drop out of school, you're gonna start an online business and everyone should be like, amazing, good job for you. It's yeah. complete bullshit. Yeah, like you're never you, gonna get that. Yeah, you, you, want, you actually want people to say, dude, this is can't a mistake. Yeah. You can't yeah, do it yeah. because if yep. you need everyone around you to support you you weren't built out for it anyway yeah jeez right wow, that's, right? Gonna, that's gonna hurt a lot yeah, of people you straight up like i i knew it down to my bones like in my blood i'm like i know what i want to do yeah i'm waking up i know this is my path okay i don't like i don't care if those that love me around me are trying to tell me hey i don't think this is the right move that's fine i'm gonna do it anyway but if you're that susceptible and mm -hmm. that malleable that like your mom telling you you need to go to school but I also meet a lot of kids at university. I'm like, why are you even in school? Yeah, my my parents. My, my bro, it's your fucking life. Yeah, yeah, it's your yeah, life. Yeah. It's your four years. Escape the matrix, bro. Escape the matrix, Escape man. Escape the fucking uh, matrix. Even, yeah. even like, I want to get into like just the fitness industry as a whole. Obviously, like I, I personally think it's getting super saturated online with the amount of like fitness yeah. influencers, trainers, blah, blah, blah. Even, even trainers making programs. Is there like common mistakes that you see being made out there in today's day? So, you know, I will be honest, when I first started hitting the online scene, uh, like people didn't even know what fat loss was. Yeah. Literally people didn't even know what fat loss True. was. I will be on, I was one of the very first people um, being extremely clear cut on YouTube. This is how you create fat loss. The idea that calories don't matter is completely wrong. Mm. 50 years of research shows us it matters when you actually do proper studies where you're not giving people self-reported intakes. Um, and common sense dictates that if, if we all got captured in uh in some faraway country and we were prisoners and they gave us you know three or four twinkies a day for a month we know we're not getting fat yeah, yeah. we know we can be starving even though we're having sugar yep. and, and and stuff like that so we understand the calorie balance we all but also you know again people have a hard time taking responsibility so they make the wrong they make the wrong uh conclusion right okay. so they're so they try and do a low calorie diet they try and eat perfectly healthy right they aren't honest with themselves that every four days they eat four and a half thousand calories. And they're like, yeah, I, I was starving myself. So I gained weight. No, 
you were depleting yourself. And then every fourth day, you ate so many calories to make up for the days yeah, you were binging. Yeah. If you just would have taken it in a smaller deficit just to lose a pound a week, even yeah. three quarters of a pound a week and got enough protein lifted, you would lean down uh, completely. So the calories matter, but people go around, go around it the wrong way. Um, but that was a big myth. Um, fasting, when I started talking about fasting, everyone was yeah. like, this is complete, this is terrible for you. You're going to, yeah. you're, and then I, I was probably the mo most, there were people that came before me, credit where credit's due, that talked about fasting, who I learned from. I was completely the most prolific on fasting. Yeah. As far as YouTube views, my Bruce Wayne video had 50 plus million paid views, yeah. 3 million views, the, the content. I No one was talking about fasting in any sort of capacity. And then they all kind of came around later. Yeah. Um, and they definitely like, you know, credit to them as well. But as far as like what actually created that initial movement of fasting, um, there was a guy, Martin Burkhan, who definitely had more of like a fringe website, fringe following, who really did an amazing job um, breaking down a lot of the, the, the a lot of the bullshit shit miss and very scientific. Um, and that was very, very helpful. Brad Pilon, Ori Hoffmeckler. But as far as like what actually, who actually got the most amount of people to actually start fasting to take that step, motherfucking me. In terms of fasting though too, cause like, I mean, I was doing it for a bit. I like, I try to do it. I feel good when I do it, you know? Yeah. Is there, is there a right way to do it? Like I was reading something the other day and it's like people fast for the morning, but people fast in the afternoon. Is there a, is there a right way to do this? So what I believe um, is there's, people can make it very, very complicated. I think the most amount of benefits uh, you will get is just simply pushing that first meal of the day a few hours into the day. Yeah. So what time do you guys wake up at? I probably like, <laughs> I'm, I'm between like, like five, seven, seven thirty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. Let's just say 8 a.m. Yeah. Keep yeah. it simple. So instead of eating at 8, 8 a.m., 8.30, push it till noon. Yeah. Um. And in Ori Hoffmelter's book, Warrior Diet, it, it, the whole kind of thesis is that human beings, our hunter-gatherer ancestors, were wired to fast and forage during the day, eat light, be in that sympathetic nervous system, which you're, you're alert, you're focused. Like I'm doing this podcast, like completely fasted. I've had an octane, I've had some of this. Happy dad. Happy dad. <laughs> it's pretty nice. Um, but I'm pretty much in that sympathetic nervous system. My body's not digesting food. Um, when you eat a big Thanksgiving dinner, you get really tired, mm -hmm. right? So the whole idea is to keep yourself in sort of that alert, focused, fastest state for the first half of the day, and then kind of tip into higher calories, more food in the evening. I find that to be like beautiful. That's what we're wired for. You get, and then I wake up, I have coffee, I have octane, I just want to work. Yeah. Yeah. If I eat breakfast, I'm lazy, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm lazy. And then when I eat dinner at night, big dinner, I want to socialize, I want to chill. I want a massage, Nice, you know? And so I find that strategy amazing. And I've met some people that like eat breakfast and stop eating at four and go to bed without having food in yeah. six hours. You guys are fucking weirdos. Yeah. Those are sociopaths. No, but there are people that will argue that breakfast is the most important meal. You, I'm um, sure you've got that a lot. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. But like, I, I don't see any, like, I don't see any sort of research behind yeah, that yeah. assertion. That's just like a, uh, a myth. Look, ultimately, if it's fat loss that we're talking about, it's obviously about being in a calorie deficit. Now, yeah. the way to do that is whatever is the easiest way for you to eat the 2,300 calories a day. Okay. Is it eating breakfast? Is it eating lunch, skipping dinner? Is it fasting, eating lunch and a big dinner? Is it eating every two to three hours and small meals? Okay. Um, but the problem like that, here's why I prefer not to eat breakfast, okay? So basically, when you wake up, um, cortisol levels are at its highest. Now, yeah. cortisol is not inherently bad, right? Just like yeah. nothing, no body process is inherently bad. Um, cortisol is known as the stress hormone, but it also helps keep you alert. Okay. And it's also it's also like a breakdown. It's, mm -hmm. it's a catabolic hormone. So it actually, cortisol can actually be, you know, it helps you break down body fat, right? Okay. Um, and so in the morning, now when you have high insulin and high cortisol, right? That's not the best combination okay. because insulin creates storage yeah. with, with cortisol, it's not the best. Uh, so in the morning when you fast and cortisol levels are highest, you also get an increase in growth hormone. And then your insulin levels are low and it almost creates like the perfect state, you know, for 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 burning fat because you have okay. high growth hormone which actually helps preserve muscle protein. You have low insulin, your cortisol levels peak in the morning then they dip down and then you start to feed yourself later on. So I find that style to work well. I've also seen some research where basically they controlled two groups of people, they had them basically eat their biggest meal, highest carb in the morning or the evening. And funny enough, the evening group, they had uh, retained more muscle, lost more fat and had a, a lesser drop off, drop off of leptin, that hormone that helps you stay lean. Mm. So I, 
as far as my own experiences, my own personal experiences, as far as you know what I've seen, I'm working with clients. I find like our bodies are primed to wake up, to fast, to get stuff done, yeah. to drink coffee, uh, have a keno octane, uh, and then you can eat lunch. I eat a smaller lunch, a big feast, a little bit of dessert, and I like to work. It's like that whole that's the whole dopamine thing, right? So I actually like to um, I like to be able to work hard and then look forward to a big feast. Yeah, that's like your reward. That's my reward, yeah, and that yeah. actually builds the dopamine pathways. And if I wake up. Do nothing. Eat a big breakfast. You yeah, know, it's just you're, you're, you're that's wrong. Yeah, you're done, There's yeah. one way to do fasting. <laughs> yeah. You don't eat breakfast. You and then you know I, I get so annoyed when people say, yeah. "Well, you know, technically breakfast is break <laughs> fast, so even the first meal of the day is breakfast." <laughs> Shut the fuck up, bro. <laughs> I mean, okay, I, mean, I never that's get crazy. laid. <laughs> that's crazy. Seriously. <laughs> Well, technically your breakfast is break fast. No shit. We all know this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how, like fasting at night must be, like we we do the morning ones. Like the morning, the morning you feel say, dialed, I, bro. I, like, have feel days, dialed. I have days, man, where I won't eat my first meal. Like I'll wake up One, at, let's say 7, 7.30. No, I have days where I'll go 3, 4 p.m. until wow. I have my first meal. Yeah. But I get so much work yeah, yeah, done prior to that. Then I eat and then, yeah, you go into that little bit of like lethargic state and then the work does isn't as easy to do at that point. Yeah, so what I do is all like for my first meal, it's very strategic. I don't, okay. I eat maybe four or 500 calories, I stave off hunger, get some protein in. Yeah. And then uh, I have my substantial meal for dinner. Cool. So that way I, I still feel like I eat that meal. I still, I'm Can going. Shit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I used to eat like, you know, I used to eat like a bigger lunch and I feel exactly that way. And sometimes I eat a bigger lunch, like I want to keep eating. Yeah. Like my brain is, is very interesting. Like I, I'm like, I can be like all or nothing where it's yeah. like, you know, I'd rather just keep it light and then be able to eat the big feast. Yeah. I can't, and I have a big appetite. So I know how to like, I know how to famoose the goose. I know how to yeah. keep myself lean. <laughs> you know, I know how to, I've learned these tricks. I, I took a long time to figure out even for dinner. Sometimes if I'm making dinner, I'll have some steak, some broccoli, and I'll wait like 30, 45 minutes, put on a TV show, eat my potatoes and the whole meal is extended. Where if I yeah. eat everything in 10 minutes, I'm like, yeah. kind of want to keep snacking. It's true. Yeah. Fuck. You're dropping gems right now. Dropping gems. Y'all better get fit as fuck after this Y'all better, episode. you know. <laughs> well, well we, we have a famous question, but before we ask you the famous question, yeah. I have one more question. But to, to, to finish that last point about like, you know, whichever way is more enjoyable for you. Yeah. So if you sure. want to eat breakfast and you feel great eating breakfast and you don't need to eat late at night and that's your style, then go and do that. Um, you can, I can sometimes eat an hour before bed. Uh -huh. um, it's fine as long as you hit your calories. The idea that eating late is gonna cause fat storage is wrong. If you're in a deficit, you're in a deficit. Also, if you eat at night, um, people are like, oh, well, you won't get that boost in growth hormone. Growth hormone actually comes up in a pulse-like fashion. So you get, you can eat an hour before bed. You can uh -huh. eat five, six hours before bed. The main thing is do whatever is most enjoyable for you. Yeah. So if you wanna try my style and you love it, amazing. If you prefer to eat breakfast or five meals, do whatever allows you to eat a calorie deficit and stick to it because ultimately that's going to be the most important for your overall health and your and, and you know and your body fat and if you want if you're trying to fast all day and you do this long fast but then you eat 4000 calories you're not going to get leaner yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, i just want to keep, make that very very clear no it's okay they, yeah. listen the stuff you're giving they should be paying for it eh? should be paying <laughs> so yeah. it's okay we're giving it for free today but i'm i'm curious what is next for you what is next for the brand what is next for the company Got it. Um, so things are in a very, very good position with like the coaching, the mojo, the nitro, like everything's lined up. Like I've, it takes me a lot to really launch a new product. Mm -hmm. Like there's tons of things, uh, teams like, oh, we could do this, this. I'm like, I prefer not to, unless I really, really, really want it. I'm like, I want it. I want it. This is really impactful. Then I don't want to do a product. So I have, as it stands right now, I am going to be building out a women's coaching program and nice. more, more women's stuff. Cool. Cool. But outside of that, there's not much I want to launch or create. Like I feel very good with, I, you know, maybe that will change in a year or two, but for now, like, again, it just, it takes me so much to actually want to create a new product. Yeah. Um, I actually like planning on, you know, doing a bit more content, doing a bit more yes. coming on podcasts, having fun. Um, maybe do your own pod. Maybe do my. You know what? I've, I've been people saying. People need it, man. I'll be honest. You're, I you're like a you good could speaker. Just go you're at good it speaker. all day, dude. I, I, you know, yeah. You know what though? Like, I, if it's just me, you need then someone to bounce. I need off someone of. to okay. bounce off okay. of. You guys are 
Dude, I love this interview, Thanks, man. Bro. You guys are great. That. You guys are great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, listen, yeah. we like the, the point is to have you on and we just want to keep feeding you the yeah. kind of points to keep you rolling. Like I said, the shit you've been saying, people should be paying for. So yeah. this I mean, might go on our Patreon. You want. You can yeah, pay for it if you want. <laughs> no, but that, that's cool. Yeah, I I think uh, I think a, a podcast for you would be great. I think a lot of people can you, get you know what You know what I was even going to do? I was just going to like go on podcasts and then just get all the, have my editors and team yeah. get all those clips and just start yeah, pumping them up. That's the main juice is the clips. Yeah, the clips. Which will Kino we'll, clicks. We'll, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, which which we'll hook you up with. But I know uh, what you're saying about the products, so you don't want to spread yourself too thin. No, I, I, I like to keep it simple. Yeah. You know? and, and, and we like to say, shout out John Shahidi for this. He said, when you strike oil, just keep drilling. Yeah. And yeah. so if, if you struck oil with what you currently have, just keep perfecting it to the point where there's like literally nothing else you could do. Yeah, my, my brain works best when I'm, things are simple. I'm hyper-focused. Yes. If I have to spin 10 plates and I've done that before, whatever, I just had a lot going on. I just like my brain kind of operates at a lower level. When I'm like, like this, this, and this, just these three things, blinders yeah. on, then I start to really perform well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, 100%. fucking locked in right now. Yeah. This guy got me this fired fucking up. Dialed give, it Tim, yeah. give it Tim Sirota. I mean, okay, listen, we are, we have the famous question, okay? We are the MBH podcast, Money Buys Happiness. Okay. Do you believe money buys happiness? Okay, great question. <laughs> great question. Not bad, right? I, I believe like two things. One, you know, money can create freedom. I think freedom is very, very important for happiness. I think money can be a force multiplier. I think if your life sucks and you're miserable and you, someone gives you tons of money, it's not going to make you completely happy. Mm -hmm. I think like if you have the right head on your shoulders, uh, you have a good outlook, good positive attitude, you know, you care for people and then you have money, it can be a force multiplier. But if you're negative, always stressed out, um, not present to the moment, then, you know, you good. Cause here, like our brain always maintains homeostasis, right? So, you know, a lot of people think, oh, you know, we're, we're born to achieve greatness. We're born for success. We're born to be happy. It's wrong. Yeah. What our brain is trying to do is just maintain how the way we see ourselves, the way our mind is operating, they want to maintain that. So if all of a sudden I snap my fingers and someone is making 50 grand a year, now they're making 500 grand a year, 5 million for a short lived moment for a few months could be even longer. They're going to be like, holy fuck, they're going to be in freaking heaven. Yeah. And every single problem, every single thought, everything will return. Right. Yeah. Even most people that win the lottery, they go broke in two, three that's, years. That's right. True. So the thing is, is to understand is that money is a tool. Money can be used to buy. Um, it can be used for freedom. You can like, and in, in when you start to recognize your highest values, the things you care about, okay, man, like you love learning. You love leveling up. Okay. You got some money. You can hire this, this boxing coach. You yeah. can do this. You can take your friends on a trip. If you know how to use money strategically um, for those you care about and to support your highest values, it can be a good, good tool. Now, a lot of times guys start to make money, right? And they look at social media like, okay, well I got, uh, they try and do what other people are doing yeah. and yeah. they stop honoring what actually makes them their excited, values, right? Yes. I like to flex. Yeah. <laughs> I like you enjoy it. it. You enjoy it. Let's I go. own my Lambos, yeah. bro. I, I do it because I like it. Yeah, but, and, and that's, <laughs> but, that's amazing. But also, like, that's I like amazing. to, I like to hire some coaches. Yeah. You know, I like to learn. I like to do stuff. But I, I have found myself like at some points when I had money, I was like, I was maybe going out a little bit too much. I was going mm. drinking. I'm like, these aren't my highest values. I thought you were doing yeah. that. This is other pe other people. But I'm like, I actually just have way more fun going out to a fun dinner, couple friends, yeah. a beautiful date, a girl, taking a girlfriend on vacation. I like that. I don't like to, like, I don't love doing the club stuff yeah, that much. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. um, $10,000 on, so on a booth. So you have to have, like yeah. So the <laughs> thing about money to understand is one, right? Again, the way you see yourself, the way your mind works will always kick in. Whether you, whether you have $100 million in the bank, you will end up in the same place. So it's yeah. very, very important to get your mind right. Money is a tool they can use to buy freedom, but you have to be intelligent about it. You can use money the wrong way. You can use it the right way. So you have to actually know how to famoose the goose. Famoose you got to understand your highest values and then be able to use money as a tool. But like mo a lot of guys with money, like they're going out to what at the club, they're dropping 30 yeah. grand, bro. Yeah. There's better ways you can get way more value, yeah. you Facts. know, there's, but there's ways to use money uh, very, very productively um, and to make, but again, most people don't, most people that have money. They, they, they don't like, I'm not talking about invest, invest me. I'm just talking about living the highest quality yeah. life experience. Yeah. Yeah. There's ways to like really build uh, an amazing uh, life with money. And I think everyone, I think as a man, everyone should get very focused on money. Yeah. yeah, I think it's very, very important. I think, you know, unless you want to live in the woods, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very, very important to get focused on making money. Yeah. Like when you're waking up, like focus on money. Yeah. Like, in the world I, I we mean, live yeah. in today, Let's in the world we live on. in today, 
you want to be an alpha, money is included, whether you like it or not, yeah, but in you my opinion. But, and then you should like find the pathway to make money that you love doing, yes, right? Yes. That's, that's, that's the big piece. Yeah. That's the key. We always right? say two things. How you make the money is important. What you do with the money. Yeah. Those yeah. are the two big- We, we also say it amplifies who you are. Exactly. It amplifies, you know, it amplifies- uh, even like, you know, even, um, in a good or bad way, even, it could be. even this, this past Christmas, right? Like I, I had, um, you know, I had, sometimes I'll have a drink, a, a margarita and I'll just feel, sometimes <laughs> I'll feel generous. I'll feel nice. And you know, um, my aunt Annette, she's been, uh, extremely like caring for me even when I was a little kid. Uh, like she bought me like super smash bros when Still I was like six nice. years old and she's not, she's like never been like rolling in money. Like, you know, so she, she like spent like $80 on, she, uh, we have five kids. So she's buying five people. So yeah. she's always been very, very generous. And, uh, and then she has a daughter, my cousin, Caitlin, and like, you know, and, and like, I know she was saying like, she really wants, never been to Hawaii, really, really wants to go to Hawaii or, but actually, you know, that she, that came out later. What she, I, I said, you know, I was feeling generous. I, I told Caitlin, I said, like, Hey, I said, like, Hey, uh, um, I'm going to get you and your mom a vacation for Christmas. Where do you want to go? I'm thinking like Mexico, Dominican, yeah. whatever, all inclusive, whatever. She's like, oh my God, no way, no way. I want to go to Hawaii. Like, Hawaii is <laughs> like, fun. if you're in Montreal, Hawaii is like, you, it's a massive journey. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, we'll go to Hawaii. And I'm like, uh, and I'm like, okay, Hawaii. All right. And I'm like, I'm looking at resorts and I'm like, fuck, I just got to go all out. I'm like, here are the different options. She's like, Ritz Carlton. And I'm like, <laughs> boom. And I'm like, like five, six days. Uh, can we do eight? I'm like, okay, done. And then I saw, but I, but I felt very good. I felt yeah. very, very good. Yeah. I, uh, but that again, that's like, you know, for Christmas, I, Annette and my aunt and my cousin, they're doing a beautiful trip to Hawaii. And that's like a way, you know, I could spend that amount of money on something else, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't give me the fulfillment then, you know, yeah, you got well, to even uh, who said it? Pitbull, right? Yeah. He said money buys happiness. You just have to give it away. Yeah. Right. Very, Crazy, very, right? Yeah. 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 Very, very cool. It's good to like, you know, it's good to, you can't be too scarce. It's good to once in a while, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the most generous person ever, yeah. you know, uh, but once in a blue moon, I'll, I'll feel a little bit of generous generosity. Yeah, yeah, amazing, it feels, you bit, have to, yeah. it feels yeah. good. It feels yeah. good. You know, you got to give back hundred percent. What a fucking show. Eh? Woo. Jay, Thanks what, for Jay, what, what did we yeah, run? How, how long it. we run in here? Hour 45. Unreal. Okay, All right. Sick. Peter. My man. Yeah. That flew by, man. Dude. Appreciate that, brother. Honestly, thank you Hell for yeah. having it's us. It's gonna inspire a lot of people. Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll toss up all your fucking, yeah, yeah. all your IGs, all your links, everything. Toss um, the mojo up there toss too. Toss the mojo up, we'll do that. Um, but guys, if you made it this far, yep. we love you, appreciate it. Let me know, DM me. You guys have been doing that a lot. I love that. DM me, let me know. Yo, Ant, I made it to the end, brother. Yep. And if you have made it to the end, obviously do that. Like, subscribe, do the duties, comment, let us know what you think. Sign up, grab yourself some fucking get mojo. Some fucking mojo. All right. On, get the freaking Kino mojo. <laughs> mojo. Okay. That's that's pretty much all we gotta say. Um but well, yeah. we're we're in Miami, so we gotta go. We gotta, yeah, yeah. We gotta get straight to business. <laughs> yeah, here, right? But yeah. once again, thank you, man. We appreciate, appreciate it, brother. honestly. And uh Jay? Bro. Hell yeah. Oh.